Yeah. You know what? And I'll have Pat do it because of the three months of the day and I'm going to do it. Please do the certificate. I do not see that. Okay, the light is on. It's high. Hello. Well, welcome to the April 25th Mayor and Council meeting in Oakland. We have a very full agenda, and it's a very exciting agenda because we have the fourth grade students at Dorbert School. Thank you for coming. They're going to be making a presentation tonight. And we have our police department, and we're giving out certificates, so thank you all for coming. At this time, we'll do a roll call. Mayor Schwager? Here. Councilman Bialy? Here. Councilman Here. Knapp? Here. Councilman Kamala? Here. Councilman Levy? Here. Councilman Pignatelli? Here. Councilman Tony? Here. Now, everybody check your cell phones. Make sure they're on vibrate or off. And we also ask that you re please refrain from texting because it is disruptive and it could be a violation of the Open Public Meeting Act because it's so discourteous and disrespectful. Uh, everybody texting one another. And uh, but this time, I ask you to stand to salute to the flag and remain standing for a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Remain standing. Be seated. This meeting is being held in accordance with the open public meetings law, duly announced, advertised, and posted in the municipal building. And um, as I always start every meeting, I give my mayor's report. Um, I just wanted to say how exciting this weekend was, um, and it shows how welcoming and open we are in Oakland. Uh, many of us, most of us, attended this opening ceremony of the Sikh Temple in Oakland on Bower Drive. Uh, it was a wonderful experience, and if you ever get a chance to go there, um, they're serving the community. They're open 24-7. They will help anyone in need. It was just a very exciting experience, and thank you all on the council who attended. It was just great. And then I went to the um, ARC. Um, does she want to come up here? <laughs> it's, it's the ARC group. It's a dedication to the Child and Family Building um, in, uh, on Post Road. And it's called the Betty Center, named after Betty Hain. And um, it helps children and adults who have disabilities. What was so exciting is their theme, which is where the future has no limits. So do you hear that, children? The future has no limits. Just remember that. So we have some dates to remember. On Sunday, April 29th, is Autism Awareness Day from 10 to 4.30 at the Van Sorn Park and Zoo. Free admission, free train rides, free carousel, free animal demonstrations. And it's sponsored by the Bergen County Department of Parks and the Bergen County Department of Human Services and the, from the Division of Disability Services. So that should be very nice. On Saturday, May 5th, is the Oakland's Townwide Garage Sale. So be, get up early and shop. Tuesday, May 8th, is the Fire Department's Lady Auxiliary Strawberry Festival. And um, I think, what is that, from 6 to 8? That sounds about right. I don't know for sure. It's excellent. If anybody likes strawberries and sponge cake and ice cream, it's very good and it's for worthy cause. It helps the ladies auxiliary of our volunteer fire department. Saturday, May 12th, is paper shredding. You can bring all your papers, all your documents. Just bring them to the uh, municipal lot on Saturday, May 12th, from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. And um, you can shred all your documents away. Sunday, May 27th at 1 p.m. is our annual Memorial Day Parade and our annual Carnival this year. 
is from June 13th to June 16th, and they tried something different this year. Fireworks is going to be on Friday night, June 15th, rather than it's usually on a Saturday night. Last year was on Saturday night, it was rained out, and they could not do it the next day because of Father's Day. So this year the fireworks will be on Friday night, just in case it rains, and then it will go on to Saturday night. And that is my mayor's report. So we have um, police presentations, but we also have the fourth grade students. So we're going to switch the agenda a little bit, and we're going to have the fourth grade students come up to the podium, the microphone's in the ceiling, and they're going to make a presentation for everyone to listen to. I had a conference call with them this week. So come up to the platform, the podium. Who's speaking? Is this? Okay. Now there are cameras all over. Um, Eric, which is the best way for them to see the picture? Who to see the picture? Everybody. Oh, probably have to turn around. All right, so come, why don't you stand here? No, you can stand here. I brought a step stool. Oh, they're so sweet. Haley, she might need it. Haley most likely will need it. Will they be able to hear on television from here? Yeah, there's a microphone right up there. Okay, well, hold up your pictures. And everybody's going to say something? Not us. All right, everybody, just give your first names and where you are go to school and your grade. Okay. okay. Hello, Oakland residents. Thank you for allowing us to come to speak to you tonight. You have to speak loud. You have to speak very loud. Very loud because they want to hear you on television. My name is Jessica Vajakin. <coughs> Kayla Caulfield. Hudson Brennan. Riley Rochelle. Gabriella Buddy. Kayla Bayani. Gianna Marta. Hannah and Haley Bosca. Ashley Marscaretta. And Morgan Quill. We are here because we want to help our community. On Earth Day, Ms. Bosgra, our fourth grade teacher, showed us the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. It is a patch of garbage twice the size of our country. The majority of the garbage that is there is plastic bottles and plastic bags. <coughs> then we talked about how plastic bags are affecting our community and the Earth. Lightweight plastic bags fly away from landfills, settling in trees, storm drains, and the ocean. Here are some examples of plastic bag debris in our town for this week. Here are the facts. The average person goes through between 350 and 500 plastic bags a year. Plastic bags don't break down or remain on the earth forever. <coughs> Every 13 plastic bags produce, produce requires the same amount of petroleum to drive a car one mile. If we as a community began using reusable bags, the average reusable bag has a lifespan of over 700 disposable plastic bags. For our plan of action is as follows. First, we would like the council's permission to create a bulletin board at the trail on 202 that connects to Dogwood Hill property similar to this one. On this board, we will highlight the use of reusable bags instead of plastic. Our next step will be co to contact the Chamber of Commerce to share our research and ask that local businesses stop using single lightweight plastic bags. We are also working on creating a sticker that would promote the stores that no longer will be using plastic bags that they could proudly display showing their support of our efforts. As community members, we can encourage others to use reusable bags and decline the use of single usable plastic bags. We are confident that our community would not feel the effects of this change because many other communities in the U.S., such as Coral Gables, Florida, and the state of California have already banned the use of single-use plastic bags and their community members did not revolt. As you can see from the images we have here from the last few days of around our town, it is imperative that we all take action. Again, thank you for your time and support with our cause. the bulletin board that everybody passes when they're driving on 202 and they look at Stuart Woods Park. Is that correct? And it's a bulletin board with a glass enclosure 
And is that what you want to put in? Something yes. similar. Yeah. So that's a picture of what it looks like. Oh, this is the picture. So why don't you just walk around and show everybody the uh, what you're discussing? <coughs> Us. <laughs> 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 Stewart Woods is um, owned by the borough. It's maintained by the borough. The um, Eagle Scouts had created the path, is that correct? The walkway. And the Environmental Commission was really very, um, very um, important in getting us the property. So we are discussing with the uh, Councilman Pignatelli, the liaison. He is the councilman that goes to the environmental commission meetings, and you had suggest made a suggestion to them, and and that's about going there. Mm -hmm. you want to tell them? Yes, uh, at the next environmental commission, uh, if one of you, because uh, we meet in a very small room, but if one of you uh, would like to go to the meeting, uh, please let the mayor know, and the mayor will refer it to me. And then you can, because they're the ones who really maintain the park, though it's our park. We love it, and um, it's locked. And I, we don't need, I don't even know where the key is. Where's the key? <laughs> we have to find out where's the key. But um, I think we're all very excited. I thank you. We all thank you. And do you have any questions of us? <coughs> any of the council people have any questions? Of the students? No. Then we thank you, and who is going to be, uh, your teacher will get in touch with me? Yes. When is the next environmental commission meeting? My phone with me has the calendar. <laughs> Sorry. Your flip phone has a calendar? <laughs> 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 I believe it's the first Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> is it the first Tuesday of the month? Yeah. It's the first, that's next Seven. Tuesday night. What time? 7.30. 7.30 in... Uh, the municipal building and the Correct. council conference. in the conference room. Yep. So maybe one or two of you can uh, decide which of you will come and make the presentation to the environmental commission, and then we'll move from there. How does that sound? Good. Good. Thank you for coming. You can stay. <laughs> And you should stay and listen to the next presentation, which I'm going to put in the hands of Councilman Knapp and Pignatelli. Good evening, everyone. Um, uh, we as a police department would like to recognize three of our officers this evening for outstanding service. Um, first of all, I'd like to, set to uh, thank Lieutenant Christian Oger and Officer Bart Padre for recommending these officers to be recognized. You know, without them, you know, sending that information up to chain of command, you know, events like this don't happen. So we're, we're proud to have these officers and uh, recognize them for what they do. Uh, before I introduce the three officers, I just want to give a little background on the incident. Um, on March 14th at 3.15 in the morning, uh, police dispatch received a call for a medical emergency and the woman was um, not breathing. She was unresponsive. She didn't have a pulse and her husband was uh, actively giving her CPR. All right. um, the three officers responded immediately and they were all there within four minutes. All right, and that's something that, uh, as some uh, part of the police department and and a part of Oakland that I'm very proud of, that we can have three officers at someone's doorstep in their time of need in, in four minutes. Um, these officers showed up and they were, sorry, I'm looking at you crying. Uh, <laughs> these officers showed up and they did their job they applied their, their medical training and experience, and they were able to help this woman um, and revive her through CBR and using the automated defibrillator. And um, they were able to get her into the ambulance and to the hospital. 
So um, at this time, I'd like to introduce the three officers to the Brown. bars that are going to be presented to the officer. So if you could just present them, just hand them to them and shake their hand. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys. You can get a little closer. I mean, <laughs> yeah, there's a little love there. <laughs> nice job, PB. Thank you. <laughs> Public Safety Committee. So the, from the borough, we're, we're issuing um, these life-saving awards as well. And I'm just going to read one of them. Obviously, they're the same for, for everyone. So it says, for outstanding performance on March 14, 2018, by using your skills and training to provide the appropriate medical treatment that resulted in the preservation of human life. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> couldn't make that up. <laughs> uh, it, was, it is with great pride that police officer John Lou and Steve um, are recognized for their quick response and actions under pressure when a resident of Oakland needed it most. The mayor and council, administration, and police department proudly commend you for your outstanding performance and professionalism presented on this day, the 25th day of April, 2018. Hi, <laughs> do you want to say anything as well? No, it's no, a yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh, on a personal note, I just, I just, from an emergency service side, of, most of you know, but if you don't, I've been a fireman in this town for 36 years. So it, it, it's just, it's huge to be able to do something like this. Most of what we do fire-wise don't usually end in results like this. So it's nice to be on the other side of the coin. I'm very happy you're here, um, and I'm very happy these guys were, were there as well. So um, that's just from me personally. I just want to say thank you. I have to say, I'm also on the first aid squad, and I do respond to some of these officers when they do respond to a house. They're so professional. Uh, they're so well trained, uh, and uh, you know they're here to help. And uh, I can't say any more for them because they're really good people. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next time we do one of these, 
Mayor, we need to supply tissue. <laughs> but it was so perfect that the young, the young yeah, children in right. here yeah. see that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You don't have to rush out because this is a very important item next is discussion of the Van Allen House and the Stream House. So we have a very special presentation. They're going to linger. Okay. Um, my, my I'm Margaret Hickey. I'm a historic preservation specialist with Carleen Hickey Historical Architects. Um, we've been working with the borough and right everybody stop for a minute. <laughs> They're a little noisier than we thought. <laughs> Um, we've been working with the borough for a number of years now at the Van Allen House property, um, which includes the Stream House. And um, although there's some debate about how beloved the Stream House is, it has been deemed that it is um, significant to the history and development of the borough. And so um, there has been advocacy on many parts to try to save the building. Um, after some back and forth and some discussions, what we are proposing in concert with the borough is to, um, and we've, we've, we've worked with the Historic Preservation Office who actually provides authorization for this type of work, is to actually dismantle the superstructure over the stone um, elements of the, of the building. Um, we have it documented. This, you have tried to stabilize it, I think, on a minimum of at least two occasions, but we think it's actually more like three over the years, which is a good trigger for allowing the SHPO to um, permit you to, to do this. So what we're proposing right now is to come up with a game plan for dismantling, show how we're going to do it to um, the State Historic Preservation Office, get, allow them to provide authorization, you go ahead and dismantle it and at the same time we have to pro provide a design for it to be put back. But that timing can be determined as part of the negotiations with the, sh with the his Historic Preservation Office on the time frame on um, when they would want it to be put back. Um, we do have experience with this um, in Mount Hope, um, which is part of Rockaway Township. There is a um, a miners church that had a small school addition on it. The building was abandoned for years and years and years. The county purchased it to be part of the larger parkland, but really had no money to spend on its restoration. 
rather than lose the school building in, in, in total, what we proposed to the Historic Preservation Office was to dismantle that part of the building, keep what we could. It's all stored in the basement of the, um, the, the main part of the, the church. Um, and then when the, the county has the money, they'll be able to actually put it back. They were given a three-year turnaround on um, rebuilding it. Uh, we're probably now going to have to ask an for an extension for two more years, but they're okay with that as long as we're kind of moving along towards um, <coughs> restoration. One of the key problems with Dutch stone or Dutch framing is the uh, gambrel roof. A lot of them weren't actually designed properly, and that's what's caused your inherent problems at that building is that the, the, the gambrel roof was really not tied properly to the frame of the building and so is kind of spreading apart and all that kind of stuff and we've tried to pull it back together but because there's just inherent problems with the underlying structure um, this is this is what's causing that to happen so we've had experience with doing this our goal would be um, as your consultants to make sure we don't have to go to sites council that we can do everything at the staff level. Um, based on the previous experience with the Mount Hope Miners Church, I, I really do believe that we, we can continue in that direction. Um, so we, we work with you to, to have that discussion with the Historic Preservation Office about um, how, how to make it so this way we can go ahead as, as, we, as we like. So yeah. before you go to the Preservation Office, we have to have a plan of, of rebuilding. Yes, so we have to at least have a schematic design of what you plan to do, which is what we did. Well, the, the county was actually originally going to um, stabilize the schoolhouse and, stop working. and then it, it didn't work and what they did was they actually used their own public works guys to do the dismantling um, part of our work was to actually go out uh, while they were dismantling to say okay we don't need this or if I needed to document something I, could do I took the time to document it um, we, we, we worked hand in hand with the with the, um, the county employees t so this way when when the time comes uh, a contractor can come in it and build it in the future. Um, so when you talk about time frame, is it from the date that we we dismant that we? I'm not going to say knock it down, but yeah, we'll dismantle. Say dismantle. That's yep. a better frame. Yep. That's a better, better term. Dismantle. Dismantle. Yep. To the time. So the time frame you said two years or three years or four years, whatever right. we can negotiate. It's from the date of dismantling to the date of starting or I don't remember if it was the date that the historic preservation office get the, gave the letter of, of authorization or the date that we dismantled because it took them because they were using their staff when they could and then we ran into a snowstorm um, actually we ran into two, a couple snowstorms it was during a bad winter um, I'm pretty sure it was the date that the, the date of the letter but we're they're about to right now go back to the historic preservation office and say look since that time, we've done a historic preservation plan. We plan on going for county money on A, B, C, and D to, to rebuild it. Um, and I think that's that's an option that will be open to you too. In the so future. all we would have to do, we we give them a schedule of dates. Right, and then that, and then if, and then if it has to move, then we just then we talk to them about moving it. It's it's like they don't want you to dismantle it, forget okay. it. You you constantly want to be in conversation with them, so this way they just make sure it didn't fall off your radar. That, this that's is so exciting. Concern. This is the best news. I told you that when we met last I know, week. I know. This was so exciting. Best news. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, <laughs> well, <laughs> Everybody, speak yes, please. Uh, yeah. Just so yeah. you're saying dis dismantling. I mean, you, they're just trying to save some some lumber, some some hardware. I'd some say for the most part, most of what it's in in there is we. we so there was already been a, t a fair amount of dismantling of the stream house, right? So we took down what was left of the tile roof, and that's all been stored. That was a major contributing problem to your problem. Uh, at some point, not us. Uh, someone dis took t took down all of the um, beaded board finishes on the inside, that's actually somewhere in the building. So we would just relocate that to someplace else. Um, there's really not much left. I can't keep the exterior um, cladding. That's also part of the problem because it's not structural. Um, it was some sort of material that really but had like a... So, so you're saving the stuff and then, I mean like, so the plan would be to put it would look the same but but new right it would look the same but new and we would not we would not be going back to the the cladding on the building is a product that was popular for maybe 15 years for good reason it, right. it was not a good product so what we would propose to do is to put back a stucco that would look like what was there yeah. and that's part of the Please. schematic design yeah. 
Uh, so just a quick question. So realistically, I just want to go back to the mayor's timeline question. So for the first nail, the first beam to be removed, how far down the road, how many months are we looking at before we start uh, disassembling? Well, it would take us, uh, it would probably take us about th three months to work through the schematic design and get your project authorization. Okay. Or about, I would say that that would be about right. At, once you get your project authorization, it's up to you on how fast you either want to bid this or if you want to do it in-house. Right, so that, that timing is on you. What we would ask for from the Historic Preservation Office is somewhere in the realm of three years. I wouldn't say we're going to turn it around in 18 months, you know, in terms of to, to build it back or even go for five years, knowing how Bergen County grant cycles work and that you already have two active grants out with Bergen County that you should probably spend before you go ask for more money. So I think when we're talking about that conversation with the Historic Preservation Office, we kind of need, really need to look at what that timing might be and how you want to go about the, the dismantling process. There's a grant for dismantling? No, 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 no grant for dismantling. Could, oh, that, that you have to do, do right, right away. Own. What's that? We could do that as soon as they give us permission. Yes. Like it's dismantle. Mm -hmm. Would that would that be something that we could do with volunteers, or is that a uh, you know like I mean, I mean I know they have they they would do. I remember when I moved into town, there was a, a sign every weekend we're going to do something here, and I never mm -hmm. saw anybody do anything there. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's the problem. Um, I would not. I think the liability of a dismantling of a building is too much. Yes. But like I said, the the public works people at at the um, you know. They have, they have a really good carpenter on uh, on staff at the Morris County Parks. They also have a lot of parks buildings that they have to maintain in house. Um, but that work that worked actually really really well. If you can go in that direction, or you hire somebody. The county actually dismantled in Morris Town. Yeah, yes, they did. They did themselves. Well, they, they purchased the property. The county. Yeah. No, yeah. the county it's actually the park commission. Yeah, the park commission staff actually dismantled the the schoolhouse. Gr granted, it was a much smaller building than what you have. But we also had to salvage a lot more than what I anticipate salvaging here. I have a couple of qu okay. well, questions. Uh, Eric well, we're not done here. Oh, no. <laughs> no. I'm sorry, Cut. That's uh, why we need to move these this table around. It just get to each other. In your opinion, how much percentage-wise of that building is salvageable or savable? Uh, very, very little. Very little. Okay. Very little. Yeah. Thank I mean, you. from the superstructure, you know, the, the masonry is right. fine. I'd like to keep the platform. Uh, the foundation. Fine. Yeah, and also the floor, and put a like an ice and water shield over it, so this way we protect that. But I think the structure itself and the and the skin is is gone. And like I said, there's no interior finishes anymore. It's just studs, and the roof is gone. And that those were those would have been two things that we would have um, kept. So we wouldn't have to keep those. Those would just be carted away at that point. No, I would keep I would keep the what you've already dismantled. Okay. Yeah, and and the rest of it would be carted away. Thank you. Okay. I just want to say thank you very much, Margaret. Uh, she's been our advocate uh, since I came back on board. I made that, and I, you know, Frank, I've been telling you that it's been my peeve that we haven't done a single thing there in a long time. And it's not like nothing has been going on, because Rich and Brian could let you know we've been meeting with the county officials. And we're trying to push this as quickly as possible, but it doesn't, you don't move Rome in a day. And this is exactly what goes on. But to get to this point, at this point in time, it's amazing that we are where we are, and I thank you very much, and we only have good times ahead, because yeah. now we have the, the presence of a plan that's going to be put in place by you, and then the uh, presentation to the state, and then we could start doing what we have to do, and we'll make that change on that corner, and we'll make it a. a we'll be. So, we're going to build something that we're all proud of. Right. So and I just thank you so much. Future. I mean, our goal is, you know, the, the the sad thing is we don't like buildings that are unoccupied. Right. And as you said, indicated, we can't use volunteers on this piece because there are materials in there that wouldn't be good for the pub, average public to be uh, in, involved in, and it's hazardous. And because of this instability of the building, it, it, it's going to take some people that know what they're doing right. to take that building down without any injury. Right. So um, I applaud you for the work that you've done advocating for this to get done. So. Well, this was the first meeting, I mean, since I've been mayor, we've been meeting regularly. This was the first meeting I walked away with a big smile on my face. <laughs> when you said, this is a possibility, I was so excited. And that's why we asked, I asked Margaret to come here tonight. 
Okay, this time. Yes. Um, I don't share your optimism about how many people would like to see that building rebuilt. I have to tell you that for, for me, it's 10 to 1. 10 don't want it rebuilt to one person who does want it rebuilt. We had an estimate several years ago of $800,000 to rebuild that uh, building. I, I, that's, it's probably even more now, so we're probably looking at a million dollars. No. If we don't get a grant from the county, I wouldn't spend a penny to get that building rebuilt. It's, it's, to me, it has no significant value. Uh, it really is an eyesore. It should have been taken care of a long time ago. I think most people were happy that the darn thing would have collapsed by itself rather than have it rebuilt. Right. But um, I, 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 I would never want my or our DPW crew to dismantle a building. I think that's so dangerous. No, no, uh, no. I'd, rather, I'd rather hire somebody to do it. So you said there's no money available to dismantle. No, I, they, they would. You would not. At least from the from the preservation programs that I'm aware of, no. So if we had to pay someone to dismantle that building, how much do you think that would cost? I don't. To be honest, I haven't done, run those numbers. Well, tens of thousands of dollars, I would think. I I, I don't think it's I think a couple it's, of thousand. I think dollars. it's about four weeks worth of work for a crew mm -hmm. of like three or four. So, but a prevailing wage. So. But but wait a minute. From day one, when when I met you, I asked you about getting rid of the, getting rid of the stream house. Knocking it down, I'll say knocking it down. And you said we can't because then we lose everything for the Van Allen house, and that was the issue. Right. But, but, what, but what do we stand to lose for the Van Allen house? If it's two hundred thousand dollars, but it's going to cost us eight hundred to fix it, I'd rather lose the two hundred than spend the eight hundred. Uh, uh, My personal opinion. I, I, I must, I must break in here. First of all, it's not going to cost eight hundred thousand dollars to build that, rebuild or duplicate. What, what, what was there? We, that, that number was on a rebuild of what is there. That is replicating everything that was on the building using that structure. Now we're talking about taking that structure away and building from ground up, which is going to be like putting up a one-family house with two rooms. That's what it's going to be. And it's not going to be anywhere in the hundreds of thousands of dollars. And as far as dismantling the building, I do it all the time, and I take down big buildings. I took down a, a nursing home with 47 rooms in it that was a block wide, and it cost less than $100,000 to take it down and remove it. So it's the, the cost here are not the exorbitant numbers that we're hearing, but the cost will be relative to the size of the building, and the cost to rebuild is also going to be relative to the size of the building because we're not doing a histor an historical renovation. We're doing a brand new rebuild. So but I just wanted to bring to that forward. It, and the whole thing is that historical. the but whole site, the whole, but the base to the whole thing, Mayor, is that whole site is on the New Jersey State Historical Register, and we have to go according to oil as far as doing anything on the property and doing it within the parameters that we're doing what we're doing now, I didn't think we'd be able to get there, but we are there. But you have to do it. You have to rebuild a building according to historical standards. No. So, in, if it's the deemed historical. So, the, so the, 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 you, have two, you have two issues specific to the stream house, which allows us some latitude with how we go about, about rebuilding it. Number one is we can use a prefabricated roofing structure to duplicate the um, the roof pitch, okay. right? So what we're trying to achieve is the same look from the outside. You'll get some flex. You'll get a fair amount of flexibility on the inside. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then on the outside, we can't replicate that siding, that material, which was part of the cost of the the repair costs that we that that are out there because that thing like crumbled in your hand as you touched it, right? So we'll doing we'll be using a modern system that makes it look like the old. And so everything else, okay. the trim-wise, is not, you know, there's so nothing Margaret, too so short what everybody it. has to hear is what happens if we just dismantle the whole building. Right, that was my next question. And <laughs> that's what he's asking you. That's then you may, you may not get project authorization. I cannot answer that. No, 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 no. no. Let's say we agree. Down. we agree. We agree. And the, the, oh, the, there are no grants interested. available, and it comes in above the money we anticipate spending. What happens then if we say, I'm sorry, there's no grants available, and we don't have the money? What happens then? 
The building is down. As far as the Historic Preservation Office is concerned, it is part of the Ben Allen site. So you still have to get project authorization to do it, or mm -hmm. you could be penalized from the state at the DEP level for re removal of a building. Well, that's that the problem. question. What What is I that? I do not know what that is. It could be monetary. Yeah. It could be a whole it. host of other things. Yeah. Uh, see, I've never been involved in that level. Yeah. My job is to get because I think I think one of the suggestions <clears throat> in the past has been to dismantle it and then use that area parking, parking or, or uh, you know, maybe a whatever, uh, an outdoor tent or something for a festival, but... But you uh, can't because it's over a stream. But isn't there a cement slab? No, it's a wood frame slab, so you still have to put a roof on it. It's not a cement slab, it's, it's, it's a deck. The, the floor is, is all wood, there's no cement. The, 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 upper, the upper floor is... No, 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 the, the base. The basement is... Ba yeah, but you just that's have an open sky. Cement. Yeah, that's, that's cement. cement. Yeah, that's what they said. Right. You know, but anyway... Uh, I mean, it'd be interesting to find out what would happen if we never rebuilt it since there's no, if there's no grants available and we don't have the money. That would be interesting. I'd be interested in knowing that. I, I don't know the answer. But you can find out that as, answer, though. As a preservation <laughs> specialist, my objective is always to restore, right? And I remember the, that. I was on the council when you made that, that the, statement. The, the question that I asked them is, you won't get approval. Right, so it's very, you, you have to go to the Sites Council, right? If you want to demolish the building, mm -hmm. you have to go to the Sites Council. I'm trying to get everything done so this way you can get approval at, site, at staff level. You go to the Sites Council and they reject your proposal. Mm -hmm. They reject your proposal. So, they can come back and penalize you in some other way. Okay, so. so but I don't know what that way is. I okay, can't so how that. much more money would we be asking for from the county if we want to move ahead with the Van Allen house, how much money are we I think you about? still have one other phase left. And which would cost? Probably another 200 and something thousand dollars. That's what I'm saying. I, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't mind jeopardizing 200,000 if I have to spend 800,000. Right. That's my, I know you, I know you're in the uh, profession in the of pres preservation. Uh, yeah. I'm not in the area of preservation. I'm in the area of watching with the tax dollars, where, right. where we spend our tax dollars. I can't see spending whatever hundreds of thousands of dollars to rebuild that building. That's just my personal opinion. I know other people on the council might not agree with me, but that's my opinion. I, 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 would, I, I would really wish, I would really wish that we start, stop throwing numbers out there when you have no idea whatsoever what you're talking about. $800,000 is a number you just pulled out of the air, and then you're, no, you're starting here, something John, going on. Right, 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 that right, was right. the right. estimate of the question, professional. No, no. That was the what estimate to rebuild the house that's there. We're talking about taking that house down now and rebuilding 21st century style house no. according to the standards. And I thought your question was, what would happen, because I asked you from this from the very beginning, we just decided we don't want the stream house. Pat, Pat may be right, he may be wrong, 10 to 1. I don't think it's 10 to 1. but. What happens if we just knock down the building and said that's it? We don't go to anybody. We just knock down the building. They. This is why the historic preservation office is in the NJDEP so to be able to levy fines. What they, how they oh, do they could it, fine us. How they do it, I don't know. Excuse I don't me, know. I have a question. Well, you're allowed. Thank you. Well, thank you. You're welcome. So, as I drive past this building every day, I, it's it's obviously in horrible condition. It appears that at some point, probably not the distant future, it's going to come down on its own. Yes. It may hurt somebody when it does this. Right. So what happens if the building comes down on its own? It's called demolition by neglect. And I, to be honest, I don't know what the answer to that is. They, may, they may require you, the penalty may be required to you, for you to rebuild it. <laughs> the penalty, well, how do we find out what the penalty is? That the, and, you have to go to the Sites Council. And then the next issue is you're exactly, you're right, it's over a stream, which means, and that's a stream, by the way, that during uh, one of the more severe storms we had in the last year or two actually flooded that intersection. Mm. That was the so if that building comes down and goes into that stream, that's going to exacerbate any flooding condition that may occur. Yep. So now, now the building's a bit of a hazard. 
and and your open water permits and all that kind of stuff come into play. Well, that's that's actually a stage stream because that's that's the um, that's the Almond Brook. Mm -hmm. So what is the question? So the question is, I guess, you know, how do we how do we mitigate the damage with without invoking a lot of taxpayer money? That was my question from well, day one, one of the things, years ago. I mean, one of the things you could do is you could have the historic preservation, someone from the historic preservation come up to you and lay it all out, what your options are. They wouldn't come to a meeting like this, but they would come. But we've tried this. Do you before. have some, do you have the name of someone from the Historic Preservation Society? M Megan Barilla is the, the person. To we've tried this. Barata. Do you have Barata. her way to contact her? At the Historic Preservation Office. Thank you. Oh, Shifa. Yeah. But she may not be able to answer your questions. It's all done at Flights Council, which is a, a board like you. It's an outside board that's appointed by the governor. And, 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 and I was and, and again, I apologize. I wasn't on the council when, when a lot of these conversations started. Who, who actually owns this piece of property? The borough. We do. We do? Mm -hmm. So... Are we are we then legally liable for this property if something happens? Well, that was the building? question that's I had that, asked from day yeah, one. I question. was told we cannot knock down the building. Well, that's well. Wait, I, but my question is: if the building, if there's somebody on that piece of property in that building, somebody's walking in that stream house. Some kid goes in there, even though he's not supposed to, and he goes through that floor into the stream, and gets hurt, or, or God forbid, something worse. Who's 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 liable? We are, uh, which is why well, I demanded a fence. Yeah, bear in mind. And then the I was there. restricted as to the type of fence we could put around it. By whom? By the historic preservation office. They restricted us. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, Brian, I assume then the historic Brian, preservation. Speak up. The historic <laughs> preservation <laughs> office would then be responsible since they dictated the type of fence. Well, we have that nice orange fence. And that is what basically happens you're supposed to follow the rules and regulations of historic preservation just like the municipality they will have various immunities as a state governmental entity regarding uh, their processes you know, it's like the DEP they tell you what to do you either do it or you don't okay so at the end of the day we have a responsibility to protect the residents and, and it's your and it's your contention that to remove and replace this building would cost how much? I don't know. This is you haven't hired me to do that study. That's part that's of why process. that's why John uh, Councilman Bialy was saying numbers are being thrown out. Well, that's we what, don't know the numbers. So, what what is involved with us finding out what the numbers? I mean, you know, to hire your firm to do uh, you know a huge study without us having any idea of what we're getting ourselves into. That doesn't seem like you know the smartest thing to do. So what 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 options are available for us to find out what we are potentially getting into in terms of your company's fees, which I know we have have here, and what it's going to cost to take down this building, and and you know a, a good faith idea of what it's going to cost to you know put it back in in accordance with SHIPA. See, so, I've learned the lingo. <laughs> so. Um, I mean, you could hire me just to do that, just to, to figure out what it, what, how many man hours and all that kind of stuff to take it down and, and what other materials would be needed. Honestly, I don't want to know. I just want to know a dollar figure. I want, I want, I want, what, what I want somebody. What it cost me to do something like that? Yeah. $2,500. And, and the, what you would give us in turn would be, again, man, hour, man hours is not relevant. What I really care about is what's the bottom line number. But that's, so you, that is the bottom line. So that you'd be was, able to give us a dollars and cents figure. It would be labor and materials associated with dismantling and, and what we would need to do. And we're just talking the superstructure. We're not talking the, the foundation. That's a, unless you want me to look at the whole thing. I thought we were keeping the foundation. Well, the, yeah. Yeah. So I'll, I'll, I can, that's. Okay. Thank you. But do you think that if we started this, they will definitely approve us? Uh, dismantling the building. I, I talk. I talked to them, and, and we have precedent. Okay. That we have to do something with that building. Absolutely. It's, so, it's a given. It's a given. But exactly but again, before we make decisions, and then we've 
you know, we've decided that it's eight hundred thousand dollars to do something, or that it's well, five thousand. You know, unfortunately, we're going to have to get someone or some ones to tell us what we're getting ourselves into. Then we can make an informed decision because Councilman Bialy's right. We're we're not making a decision based on on anything concrete. All right, Councilman Knapp, do you have anything to add? Just uh, Frank, I know you want to talk. Open sessions next. So we'll be next year she before she goes. Well, she'll stay for a few minutes. So my only question kind of it was on the same page as Lou. Could you move forward? I can't see you. Is, I'm supposed to Lou is, you know. Um, is, uh, That's right. Pick on the new guy. I'm concerned. My concern is, is the safety of, of, of the people. Right. So, you know, even if, even if it's a kid just going to the Van Allen house or an adult and, and something happens, you know, who's on the hook for that? It's, it's the borough's property. We all know that it's in the condition it's in. And we're, whether we're allowing it or the county's making us stay, I'm not, this, this gets a little, you know, a little bit this in the wash. This is the first time after our meeting last week that um, there was a light at the end of the tunnel. In other words, that they said this building could come down. We can't just, as you heard, we can't just knock down the building. We don't know what we're subject to. I, I know, but I know what we'll be subject to when something falls Absolutely. off that I've building. I've said that, I'm telling you, somebody. just having a fence, I had, I had yeah. difficulty. Well, that's my biggest concern. That, that's not much of a fence, by the way. This is all I was allotted. That's that's what we were permitted that's what to you do. Were allowed. Uh, and you know, in the past, we have done. I think um, Margaret, correct me if I'm wrong. I think two rounds over the years of cabling in the building yeah. uh, and removing loose shingles and trying to do what we can at least to secure the site uh, again to the extent that we were able to. Um, that should have a barbed wire fence around it. This is the first time, though, I heard. I was always hoping that during a hurricane would you know, uh, would happen. No, you this weren't. Is, I wasn't. <laughs> this is the first time I heard that if, if by um, an act of nature, the building came down, we could be liable also. Yes. Well, yeah, because I didn't realize that. Because yeah, it's, 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 it's called the demolition by neglect. Bruce, and I did not know that. And it's protected under the New Jersey Register Act. You, the building's on the register. It's a failure to maintain. Right. Failure to maintain. The amount of money that I came up with, as I stated before, wasn't that in a report that you made about? Yes, so that was when we were. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that amount of money. Right. That, yeah, you're absolutely right. That yeah. amount of money I yeah, spoke about came from you. Did you. Not, you did not make that. Up. Okay. Yeah. And that was a no, couple years ago. That was, ago. Different. That was it, for something different. I understand what you're saying, John. I do understand what you're saying. Totally different I, because. I, but I didn't take it out of the year. Putting that building back together under the guidelines of SHPO with the material that, that is there and replicating it. Right, so we're, 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 one was restoration and what we're trying to do is basically rehabilitation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then we could make it, we were She's hoping to make it like a little uh, historical schoolhouse. Schoolhouse inside for studies with, from for the whole county. county. Cause this is the original county seat. Right. Not the original. It was and SHPO county. doesn't really like to original. see us duplicating. They'd like to see replicating but not duplicating. Yeah, because there's a fine line and you don't want to present a false exactly. sense of history. And this was a county seat, that's why it's courthouse place. It wasn't the original of it. Was it, it was it's Hackensack and then it burned down. Then, then it, it was moved, here, yeah. then went back to Hackensack. So it's an ideal place for history. Mayor, so, can yes. I just ask a quick question? Maybe Mr. Coons can help me out so or, who, or Margaret. Who are you asking? Uh, how much have we spent on the stream house to date as far as stripping it down, taking oh, the tiles. Just asked that together. question two seconds ago. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, and Margaret, maybe you know with more detail, because I'm, I'm I was trying to think about what we spent. The original cabling job that was done like 2007, then the subsequent cabling and the roof uh, and the fencing, I, I'm ballparking at about $20,000 or so over the years. Wanted, but but I, that was with grant money, by the I way. Wanted we, we to got say, grant well, yeah, I want to say with the grant money, it was probably more like 36. Yeah, it was I more than say that? One of the contracts was for 36, but there was a 75 grant from, 75% grant from the Burden County for that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, because that was during the... Um, that was during the Judy. Yeah, okay. I think we have to just discuss at some point whether or not we want to retain their services or somebody else's at least to give us an idea of what we're getting into. And then I would assume that if we did contract with your company for $2,500, if we decided to move forward, uh, would that, any of that $2,500 be credited against your services for the rest of the work? Yes, because I would have had to do cost estimates as okay. part of what we were doing. Fine. Okay. And just so I'm clear again, so you said basically everything part of that, everything from the foundation up is 
not usable in that building that's in the right. state. Yeah. So at the end of the day, if it's going to be demolished, uh, you have to dismantled. Type, dismantled. I'm sorry, taken apart, <laughs> taken down. Yeah, you, uh, you don't necessarily have to do it as carefully as you would have at, like okay. we did at the school. So house. there's really isn't right. that much added cost on it. It's basically just ripping. Yeah. Take, they're right. ripping. Right. Just thank you. And whatever we, we do, if we could promise not to make anything bright blue like we did last time with the roof. I mean, that's that was the ice that, that was the really, water shield. That's, 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 that's was the color really you nice. get. <laughs> that was really nice. You know, I drive past it every day. It looks fantastic. Um, we got to uh, really, whatever we do, uh, I'm serious because the bright blue is ridiculous. I mean, we could have we could have painted it black. Um, we, you, you know, I, um, I have no control that, did, over that, that didn't help. That didn't help yeah. any yeah. any, uh, uh, you know, buddy with like in the stream house. One, I mean, one more question. So even though it's designated historic, mm -hmm. we would not have to return it as a his, to a historic state. We could just rebuild it the way you said and it would cost a lot less money you'd have to make it look like it does today mm -hmm. but using modern technology which would be easier and faster to do okay so, so because it, it should right. result in less money because in, in you're, the you're past prevailing wage so yeah. in the past the way it was money. explained to me was that um if there was a certain kind of wood on it uh, originally you had to hire someone who specifically can work on that particular type of wood a uh, particular type of tile particular type of window and and that's what drove the cost up so you're saying we wouldn't have to do that anymore no we could we could put more modern oh. materials in that are more off the shelf oh, good okay yeah john that's 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 what i misunderstood thank you <laughs> Any that's other why questions? i wanted to ask it <laughs> if there are no other questions um a motion to open to the public to ask so questions. Moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. <laughs> As we all know, I'm here long enough. In this Longer town. than the stream house? Now for, yes. <laughs> now, first of all, the last time you have to be naming your name. Frank Monaco, 60 Factory Oakland. The last time I was here, I said, What is this going to cost us when they were some type of present? Nothing. I said, Oh, good. I sat down. Now, I already see it's going to cost the taxpayers money. But putting that aside, uh, taking that thing down, it was my big mouth 10 years ago who said the sides were falling. The next day they ran and they put wires and wood up to hold it together. Prior to that, they put uh, four by eight beams to hold the roof. Not that hard to take that building down. Cut the wires, the sides will fall. <laughs> right? Now, you're worried about the stream. For many years, as the building deteriorated, you saw pieces of wood from the soffits underneath. Matter of fact, Lisa's uh, husband was cutting the grass one day and he had the goggles on and the glasses and a piece of wood missed his head by, I'd say, not even a half a foot. Right? By the time I could holler, he was around the other side. So pieces of that stuff still fall in the stream. To avoid all of it falling into the stream, I mean, if you want to save money taking it down, you build platform all around the side. Just plywood platform. So that when the thing falls, it falls on the platform, you're protecting the stream 90% of it, and then you haul the garbage away. It's not a federal project. Uh, start by first cutting the wires. And believe me, that building will just go boop. <laughs> the roof will still be standing because of the four by whatever they got there. Now, again, I'm going to get back to the original thing. This was not going to cost us any more money. And from, uh, Pat, you're more closer than when you said 10, 10 people out of 11 wanted that. I know because I was involved in that when she was running for office uh, as mayor. Okay? So you're not wrong. And if they think they are, matter of fact, we voted to take it down, but then all oh, the wording was wrong. All right? And the town did vote to get it out of here. Uh, like I said, there's no proof George Washington ever was here anyway. They're not sure if he was there or down the road. And the I know the horse house, there. He was in the Ben Allen it. house, not the stream house. Huh? His bed is in the Ben Allen house, not the yeah. stream house. Okay, but I'm saying that, that, well, the stream house is part of the Van Allen yeah. property, so now you can't touch it because they claim George Washington was there. To me, until somebody proves definitely 100% he was there, this is all wasted money for the last 50 years. Okay. But Putting that aside, I'm true with that subject because 
I knew down the road somewhere along the line this was going to cost the taxpayers money. But it sounds like if you listen, if we don't do anything, it's still going to cost us money because the state is going to fine us if it comes down naturally or if we knock it down. Right. So and we're going to get hit. Hurt, we're going to get, get hit <clears throat> somehow. What happened was a few years ago when I first got elected, as you know, was that the foundation came in and was going to be our angel in disguise and take care of everything about the Van Allen house and the stream house, and that didn't work out. That's why. Too many politics, that's why. Can, All right. can we clarify the last meeting, though? The last meeting was only a discussion of the Van Allen house, and the county received, the, the borough received grants from the state and the county to match each other, so no money out of the borough money will go to the Van Allen house. Okay. okay? I just right. want to clarify okay. that. Okay, well, all I know is that somehow there was, there was no I knew somewhere the down the line this project was going to, again, cost taxpayers money. But if we don't do anything, it's still going to cost us yeah. well, like money. Well, like I said, in other words, well, the way, you know, everybody twists it. Politics is a wonderful thing, okay? All right? Every time this happens, every five years we get a different story. Okay, and meanwhile the okay. building is still there. Now we're going to get penalized because the building is deteriorating. Well, if the state is that damn interested in that building, let them come in and put their money into it. Let me tell you something, man. If I was mayor, that building would have been gone. One night you would have heard a loud explosion. <laughs> Believe me what I tell you. But then we would have been fine. You know what? It would have been cheaper 20, 40 years ago. It would have been cheaper instead of this dragging on for 40 years. And it's going to drag on for another 10. No, it's not. Okay. I hope you're right. Okay. And I hope it don't cost us a small fortune. Okay. Putting that aside, thank you, young lady, for staying. Thank you. Okay. Now. Any more questions for Margaret? No, I said thank you. Anybody I'm else done. here for Margaret? No, thank you. All right, thank then. Because okay. I know you have a, a long drive. No problem. Thanks. Okay, now, I informed you earlier today and I met with the borough engineer, uh, public service, gas and electric, <laughs> in their infinite wisdom. That I asked them two years ago and I mentioned to this mayor and council, if they were going to do any work, let's get it done and don't do the street. Well, they're now not only going to do, they're going to do all of Allen, I mean Allen, all of Daiquiri and Whittier, okay? New gas lines. No, I'm, I'm sorry, Frank, it's, it's, not, it's not all of Thackeray. Oh, it's, it's not it, all of no, it's, it's, it's just a section. It's just well, section. I know one thing. Leonetta came and painted my... Yeah, I think it's your section. It's your yeah. section. From yeah. Where the new, yeah, oh, wow. where the new, where the new paving is done, yeah. okay? But now I understand, because I got a letter, they're going to put everything back the way it was when they're done. Mm -hmm. Uh, from us to God's ears. Take right? pictures. And you know I'm going to be on somebody's backside. Because John? You'll be, you'll be on mine. Yeah, because I have the kids playing again, roller skating and uh, all kinds of stuff, all right? Uh, their little bikes and everything, which we didn't have in years because the street was ba bum ba bum into holes and everything else. All right, so anyway, I just, I had informed you earlier today because you said you didn't know. Right. That's done. Now, the garbage. We made all of these changes. Do you really think that you are recycling more now than you were last year or two years ago? We don't know yet. We don't Rich, have I'll, I'll give you the we, answer. We have no, two months not. of data. I haven't looked at that to compare it to last year yet. I'll tell you, you're not. What's going into the garbage? Okay, now the next thing is, and a little humor, I thought maybe we can get the citizens of Oakland to be put on the payroll for the garbage company. Because in two years, they're going to ask the citizens, maybe we got, we're separating everything else, that they want you to peel the labels off the cans and bottles and put them in a separate thing. That's next. All right? We fall for every little story. Believe me when I tell you, I go to the garbage dump and see what's put in the garbage dump from every other town. Right? Not every town does what we do. I don't care. I mean, to me, it makes no difference because I do what I want. All right? But that's me. Uh, what was I have one more, but when you get my age, you forget. And because she got me going with this Van Allen house. Well, again. you know what? If you need time to think about it, we have another speaker. We have another session, too. We have another session. I know. Uh, did you want to talk? Yeah, I yeah, have. Go ahead. Anyway, listen to what I'm telling you. John, you know you've been in construction. 
cut the wires that are holding the thing together, the building will fall. All right? And they'll save you a hell of a lot less. Got it. Otherwise, you're going to spend two hundred thousand dollars taking away a, a rotten wood. But we're constrained by hazardous material. That's all I got. Yeah, they say. said there's asbestos in there. Yes. So whoever goes in is going to have to wear. Yes. In asbestos in that building? On the outside. On the material that's made. Well, that you could take down it without. Okay. Well, contaminating everybody. John, you're in construction. Come know. on. All right, I'll be very quick here. I know it's been long already. Uh, Ryan Schwertfager, 58 Andrew Avenue. Uh, two very quick things. Uh, one, if there's anyone out there watching uh, who'd be interested in working on our uh, dog park committee, we still have a few open uh, slots if you'd be interested in uh, joining. And we're also uh, working on planning a craft show, another craft show, probably in the next month or so. So if anyone's interested in being a vendor, if anyone's interested in helping out, you can email uh, dog run, the number four, Oakland, uh, at yahoo.com. Hopefully we'll get a few uh, people helping out with that. Uh, and then also uh, from Communications Commission, I'll just give a, a brief little report. I'm sure Eric will have a bit more to say later, but uh, we've been slowly making some changes that you're going to be seeing over the next uh, few months that we'll be very excited to announce to everyone. Um, we're working on a revamped uh, Crossroads newsletter. Uh, it's not going to be mailed anymore, so don't be checking your mailbox. We're hoping it's either going to be an e-document, so you can then go online and view it. You got that, Frank? <laughs> uh, we, well, might, we, we might have a few printed copies for those who, who don't like going on the computer. I don't go on the computer. I do, but I don't. Okay. <laughs> but for the majority of people, you'll be able to read it online. Uh, and then we're also looking at maybe doing like, a, like a, you know, a constant contact type email out. We're looking to see if there's a feasibility in that as well. What? Constant contact, like one of those like nice emails that you get, like you know, from like a business saying like buy our stuff, whatever it is, oh. like you know, color photos and everything. Uh, and I believe you got a chance to meet um, one of our new members, uh, Liz Elizabeth Laurenti, at the uh, the Sikh Temple. She was taking a bunch of different photos, yes. and hopefully those will be incorporated into said uh, newsletter as well. So if you're interested in uh, submitting anything to the newsletter or getting involved, you can certainly reach out uh, OCC at Oakland-NJ.org. And also, we're still looking for new uh, volunteers for our TV committee. Uh, and you're welcome to attend our next meeting on May 2nd at 7.30, right here in Council Chambers. Thank you. All right, thank you. Did you think of what you were going to say? No, okay. <laughs> All right. Good evening. Mark Piercy, uh, President, Oakland PBA, 164. Why are you still here? Yeah, I wanted to come up and Speak. Uh, okay. say a few words. Um, on behalf of the PBA, I would like to thank uh, Sir Wonder Singh for inviting us um, to the Guru Nanak Mission, the grand opening. Um, and with that in mind, we would like to start getting to more community functions as a PBA and invited by other agencies in town. And at the same time, we would like to invite the public to events that we're having. So I know it's a little bit in advance, but I wanted to get the notice out there. On June 8th, um, there will be a torch run for the Special Olympics. Um, it benefits all of the athletes within the Special Olympics, and the torch run starts here at ShopRite, unfortunately at 5.30 in the morning. Um, <laughs> for students, it's a $20 donation, and for adults, it's a $100 donation towards the Special Olympics, which goes directly towards the um, participants within and the athletes. Um, where we're trying to, from? excuse me? From ShopRite to where? So we start out in ShopRite. We usually have a few recruits with us from the academy that actually do the whole leg. Um, they're in better shape. Probably. We are, yeah, they're in much better <laughs> shape. Um, the, the northern leg, I'll call it, starts here in Oakland at ShopRite at 5.30. We run police escorted through the center of town with the torch burning up Franklin Ave to uh, stop and shop in Franklin Lakes. Um, from Franklin Lakes it goes to Mawa, Mawa goes to Ramsey, Ramsey it goes to like Allendale, Waldwick, comes back around through Wyckoff. So I've asked Miss um, <clears throat> McKay who's superintendent at Indian Hills to have both Indian Hills and Ramapo students involved, or at least invited, $20 donation, get you a t-shirt. Um, and also I wanted to put it out to the public that um, 
you know, if we have runners that are out there that want to join running? us. How can we help you without running? Give them the $20. Well, you could always make a donation. <laughs> you can make a donation. Um, we do have uh, two businesses in town that are participating. Um, you can buy a torch or um, I don't exactly know what they call it, but um, the Oakland Diner, they have torches that can be purchased at the register and also at ShopRite. Each register should have a sign asking for a donation to Special Olympics. Can you have someone come to the Rotary Club Tuesday night? I will try, yes you have, a, you have somebody coming. Okay. Dr. Rod, talking about the Junior Academy. Okay, and that's also what I was going to bring up as well. All right, so you could come um, and get some money. Do the thing? You and I can walk the dairy. Um, <laughs> No. <laughs> and have an ice cream? <laughs> uh, Wait, yeah, okay. So it would be nice to, you know, have the community um, participate in this program for the Special Olympics. Um, you just brought it up, Mayor. The Junior Police Academy uh, is from July 23rd to the 27th this year. I believe the applications are on the Oakland Facebook page and Oakland web page. Possibly, I believe so. Or maybe the announcement. If not, you guys, uh, anybody can contact me uh, at the police department. Um, and keeping it in mind of having the community more involved in what are activities. The ages? Uh, those going into seventh and eighth. It's like eleven and twelve. And then we consider those going into ninth. Um, so again, keeping the community involved in some of the PBA activities, we have a Lieutenant Robert O'Keefe Memorial Golf Outing, and that is September 17th, and I believe it's at Wild Turkey this year. Mm -hmm. Where's so that? That is all the way up in Burn, Sussex, so. Crystal Springs. Crystal Springs, Crystal oh. Springs okay. Wild Turkey, to switch between the two. So I just wanted to put that out there thank and you. again thank uh, Sar Wonder for inviting us to join their community and I wanted to do the same here tonight. June 8th is a Friday. June 8th is a Friday but it's 5.30 in the morning, Mayor. It'll be nice and early. Yeah, I, I don't run at 5. <laughs> <laughs> thank I'll Mayor. change the time for you, Lou. Well, it's the whole Friday thing, and then it's yeah. not that. Uh, it's the Frank whole remembers what he forgot. <laughs> yes, I remember two things. Number one is that my understanding. Are you going to run? Uh, you know what? You may I, you may force me. I, it's my understanding that we are not going to run a uh, only we're running one Democrat. I'm talking about a torch. Oh, yeah, I'll run. Yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, we're only going to, there is going to be no competition in our November election. Am I correct in that or did I hear wrong? No, correct. correct. I'm correct. Politics is really strange. How many votes do you need if I decide to run as a Republican on this signature? As a write in ballot on the no, write in ballot? No, vote? no. I'll run. Yeah, to write in on the primary. No, I can't run. The only thing you could do now is go as a Republican. It's too late. Well, you can write it. Write it. You can write it. Write it. You could be a write in. Okay, I'll figure something out. What do you mean, not as a Republican? Independent would be 100 signatures. Right. How many? 100. It's too late. 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 It's too but, uh, and but, that could yeah. be anybody could sign as an independent as long as they did not sign the petition, either the Republican or Democrat. Is that correct? Well, you could write in at the primary. No, no, talking about the petition to run as an independent. Right now, or let's say tomorrow. Go, or you could go to the primary and have people write your name in. Right, in forget me right now. Right now, tomorrow, if a Democrat decided to run from the Democratic Party, and a Repu they couldn't do it. It's too late. Not only as a write in. Only as a write in. Okay, so it's too late. Yes. It's too late as a Republican or a Democrat. But you can write. Can can have a write in. You can have a write in. Can have a write in about it. I may win it. I really don't want to be here. What else did you? 
You know what? I forgot again. <laughs> don't, well, so don't get old. <laughs> That's all. Forget it. Okay, so I guess at this point, Step I'll entertain closer. a motion to close. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We have minutes from April 5th. Mayor, the budget. Mayor, I'm sorry. Uh, just before right. we move on, uh, was there a consensus uh, regarding Ms. Hickey's proposal? Does everybody want to uh, move forward with a, her proposal for $2,500? So moved. Uh, well, well, we need to do a resolution. It's a professional service agreement. So we would have it on the next uh, the next agenda. But that way I can actually get it from her in writing and dot the I's and cross the T's at all. Is that something that, that we could... Maybe ask someone else. I mean, you know, it's twenty five hundred dollars. But but I mean, um, you know, Miss Hickey has been she's familiar with it here since the preservation plan yes. was done. They did the preservation plan. They're already the most knowledgeable okay. people out there that about the structure. Probably would be cheaper because they do have. All right, it. That, yeah, that's fine. All right, we have a motion okay. and All we right. have a Thank second. Thank you. Roll call. Councilman Yes. Councilman Nash. Yes. Councilman Kamala. Yes. Councilman Levy. Yes. Councilman Pignatelli. Yes. Councilman Tellini. Yes. So then, as a resolution on the next the next meeting. Yep. Okay. Where are we with the budget meeting? Do we got a motion? Well, minute? we well we yes. have it in. Have a. All right, minutes. This is the April fifth, two thousand eighteen budget meeting. Oh, so moved. Second. Any discussion? Roll call. Councilman Bianchi. Yes. Councilman Nash. Yes. Councilman Kamala. Yes. Councilman Levy. Yes. Councilman Pignatelli. Yes. Councilman Tallini. Yes. We have um, a request for the green team, and that's my appointment. And I am uh, nominating or appointing Sandra Cora. So moved. That's my appointment. No, it's your that's yours. My appointment. But that was very nice. Okay. Now, there's a PSE and G request. To work on Saturday, second. To work, um, but this is not for your street. This is not the Thackeray. This is the, this is the building. Well, you know, I, I, I didn't notice any time on Saturday, so I mean, I, I, I think reasonable time would be not to start before 8 o'clock. Yeah, you're free to put whatever conditions on it uh, yeah. you prefer. I don't know. I think people sleep late on Saturday. What was the, I mean, we did, we did some restraints on, on I, I think it was 9 to 5. I, I, I think nine o'clock should be the earliest. Fine. And this is, where, this is a, uh, a crane we're talking about, too. And where is this? In Industrial Van Boren. Yeah. How close to the houses, though, is Van Boren? Bobby? It, Bob knows. it gets a little bit of, um, you can get a little bit of Long Hill, you can get a little bit of Nielsen, and that's pretty much it. The uh, Page Drive ends. It's Page Drive ends right around there too. Yeah, it's pretty, it's far. pretty far away. Do you feel nine o'clock is, is is okay? I do. Yes, nine o'clock. I agree. Do you want to make the motion? So I we'll make a motion that we stipulate that they can't start before nine a.m. And end by and end at five. <laughs> nine nine five. No, public second. Public service. Not your street. That's all right. I don't feel when they start. They're but if it's not, get it done. Not for nothing. If it's not near any residential area, what difference does it make? What well, does, we, difference it does it make? Like it Why don't we allow it to start but, at 8 o'clock? But, but he said it is. It, it's not real close, but I mean, it, I don't know how much noise they're going to make, but you, you have, like, you have They're probably going to mobilize for the first hour, and there won't be any noise, and then they'll do the work. I don't I mean. Yeah. I don't, I don't see what it hurts yeah, to put the restriction on. I know. I, I, I just think on a Saturday. It really should not be before I, nine. That's I, my personal opinion. You know opinion. what? If, you, if we do nine to five and they have a problem with it, let them come back and explain okay. explain what and their problem is. we're being consistent with what we did the last two yeah, weeks. Yeah, all the people caught that's the grass at nine o'clock. Yeah. You know, all the contractors. Yeah. So is there a motion? So yeah. move 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Second. And just for this uh, the time period, right? The, Commencing the what's when? That's this weekend. Mm -hmm. And then they, it said a number of, yeah, six weeks, right? You know, it starts this weekend. Yes, but for six weeks. Right. We need a second. We need a second. You don't have a second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. <clears throat> public hearing on the budget. Motion to open to so, the public. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Would anybody like to speak on the budget? Will we have someone to speak? They're going to spend what they want anyway. Don't worry about it. 
Well, no. That's it. I'm just speaking? Well, not during the hearing. Well, no one's speaking. Is that motion speaking. closed? Close the hearing. We'll close the hearing. Motion to close. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Now, now you can speak. Um, this I'm is it. If, uh, if you want to continue any discussions from the other right, do you want to kick anything? I don't know what. Meeting, what, you want what to I don't know what the plan know. was. Yeah. So. So Frank and I uh, have been discussing an amendment based on council's direction at the last meeting. If you could just come up to the plan, and just introduce uh, yourself so everybody who's watching knows who you are. We okay. hope to have that finalized for you. Sorry. Well, let him introduce himself. Okay. Tell, uh, tell so everybody I'm sorry. who he Frank is. Frank Murray in the borough of Okay. Uh, so we've been trading some numbers back and forth uh, on a possible amendment based on the discussion earlier this week. Uh, we want to get that to you before the end of the week, uh, and we'll probably need a, uh, a special meeting sometime next week to introduce an amendment. That amendment itself will require an, uh, a public hearing, and we're looking to try to get this all wrapped up by the first meeting in May. So I think to Frank's point, um, you know, the discussion was basically identify cuts such that we can uh, still maintain uh, uh, a budget for the year with no tax increase on the current fund. Um, is there anything else that you'd like to bring up this evening that would help inform us in how we prepare an amendment? Or is there... You know, I'm sorry. I don't know what you discussed after the meeting. Okay, this thing doesn't Just work. make sure it's there blue. <laughs> Are, I mean, we're going to still keep within our constraints of using some of the things that we think that might be somewhat excessive in order to facilitate this. We're not going to use exactly. our surplus. Right. We're right on, on target. Exact conversation we translated into uh, potential a list of potentials and have we have we gone through where any of this money is going to come from yet um, we, we've been I going can, through the various yeah we can I mean various I can budgets give, scratch copy I can give you a formal whatever you like a script at least just just a note so, a so that we know of ideas you had yeah, yeah. Well, I'd like to hear it yeah, yeah no absolutely <clears throat> Uh, don't try and replicate this font because it Oh, you made a copy for it? I just, oh. just a copy of what I had the other night. It's a, uh, very precise, so. <laughs> Listen, I, I, you know I write everything down. Yeah, you don't want to... If you can't understand any of that, just ask me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so we're, we're those are the big items. Rich actually has a list of sm uh, smaller uh, ticket items and uh, smaller increments. All right, so you're saying is well, this, this, is, this is why we weren't exactly ready for tonight yeah. because we were having a discussion yet too about what we're we'll, we'll so you're but, saying. Um, deduct. 102,000 from police salary and wages. Uh, potentially, yeah. How'd you come up with that? Uh, we we'll, we'll looked at the breakage and the amounts elapsed from the prior year. Uh, about 175,000, that's about 150, so two, somewhere in that. You don't have to go to that. It's it's basically just a uh, a pick list. We just you can go through any number of those items, uh, attach the uh, the additional items that Rich has. In smaller increments, and just cherry pick whatever you want to come up with. Three fifty-two. It's not this really. Is the next one's good for Brian legal. <laughs> Are we spending less money or more? For less him? for you. Those yeah. are all. Yeah. Those are all negative, Brian. Deducting uh, twenty-five thousand. Yeah, yeah, those little bracket yeah. things so are no yeah. good for you. There's, right? a yeah. there's an amount that's being accrued to bracket. reserve for tax appeals, which handles now it what is gasoline? How did you come? What's gasoline for all the vehicles? That's what they put in cars. Make them go. I know that. No, but which cars? No specific, just the line item itself. Line item. Okay. So, I mean, do we do we think it's prudent to reduce our gasoline when we've switched over to suburbans for the police department? The gas miles between yeah. suburbans and explorers are the same. Oh, yeah. The, the the issue the issue there with gasoline that we've kind of wrestled with year to year for several years is, you know, it's built in. It's one of these we these philosophies of it's already built in. We know gas prices aren't going to be low forever. You don't want to zig when right. the market's zagging, that sort of a thing. Um, but to the point, there is a lot of breakage there every year because of that philosophy that we've put into practice. 
Uh, same thing with the legal. You know, there's, there's a contingency built in there, which we talked about. So, so this is a, a list that Frank had. I had come up with some other ideas. Um, what, what I was really looking at uh, for t tonight is if, you know, just to confirm that that's the direction to see if there's any other uh, issues that you want to address via an amendment. I can tell you there will probably, it'll probably also include an amendment to the sewer utility. We're trying to get some pricing uh, on an outside operator. Um, but it'll probably increase that a little bit. It won't affect rates. We have sufficient fund balance there, uh, but probably increase the OE amount to cover what we think we might need. Um, but if there's anything else, you know, kind of let us know now so we can uh, prepare a final amendment for you. What is OASI? Social uh, Security. OASI? Yes. And then it looks, it looks like we're... What? Old age and survivors insurance. Oh. They still put it using old terminology. Oh, yeah. so security. Yeah. And then how much we're taking? What, 181 out of our, this out of is our not, group insurance no, trust? It's out of this list, and Rich has a, has an additional list. But some of his items are. Right. Right. We're, we're going to take pieces of this, not not a charity pick. Amounts. You got to get the 350. You got to right. pick 352. So we got it. That councilman leaves, gets you to a zero. It leaves. Uh, an amount used for uh, appropriate use of surplus, an amount towards operations of 500000 which you've statistically uh, returned in prior years. So that's a good number to leave there. You have zero. You have your surplus intact, which was a concern uh, when we talked about the other right. night. You have plenty of money in health insurance. You have options with that, with regard to that. So. If you find 352 in either in the between these two lists, you're at are everything we, you're also you and, and we are appropriately funded for everything or not? We're not overfunded for you're anything good. in the I budget. I mean, you're going to have not some. Not underfunding. Some extra. Uh, my question <coughs> is, are we underfunding? No, no. I mean, this is this is stuff that is statistically gone. I mean, there's always a, an extraordinary case, but you have options. You have your transfer period. You got accounts that you could transfer from. You got emergency. You've got fail safes that are in place. If something is uh, inadequate, as and you always have. And what does premium have. mean? Uh, in the, the group insurance, is there's two oh, components. Oh, this is all under group That's insurance. Group, yeah. Oh. Can you can you go over that in the insurance thing for me, uh, just to educate me, both you guys? Sure. Like, um, right, go ahead. Yeah. Right. Um, I think it was 2012 when we switched uh, uh, um, basically the process and carries of how when we went to the BMED. Uh, what happens is, is it created a um, there were timing issues, so the costs dropped and it created it were, uh, timing issues as to payment of bills and things like that. So you had an amount built in from your prior years for group insurance for the various categories. The premiums and the cost there was some room in there, so the uh, governing body at the time elected to or were directed to. Um, take some of that money and transfer it over to a trust account, okay. which would handle runouts if you get in, into any, any uh, you have options with that trust account. You can bring it back to uh, mitigate some of the increases, bring it as revenue. You can use it to pay any runouts. You can do it for Clint. There's a million things you can do with that trust account balance. So you've done that, although uh, despite the fact that the gap has closed over the years, that's about what it's at now at to what the line is and what that's about what it's projected to leave in and transfer it to the trust account. You're under no obligation to make that transfer. How, how, what amount is available? That's in the line. That's in the appropriation. So you, if you want to stop, you want to cease funding, if you want to stop doing that. You're talking the 181? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry? You're talking the 181? The combination of two. The combination of two. Oh, okay. Those the are two oh, sub-accounts oh, within the group insurance line. And just that's 181 and then 158 underneath there is that Correct. 58 underneath yes. 34. Like 340 in there. That has shrunk over the years, but that's about where you are now if you want to take a piece of it. Rich has this on uh, a portion of this on his list too. Um, you've got uh, three north of three million in there now, and you have another, I'm gonna guess about five hundred and ninety thousand that's slated to be in there by the end of 18 on top of that, you know, despite this in that trust account to be so, so you're good with that. We could, I mean, you could take the entire thing out of the trust and the premium, and we'd be almost where, where we want to be. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, that, the purpose of that is you know, it's for right. you know, for emergencies and, and extraordinary right. things. 
you want to stay focused on, on the line itself. If you, want to, if you want to continue that program the way it is, you can do that. You can, you can do a portion of this. You can take it in its entirety. It's entirely left here. <coughs> These are just identified things for you to pick and get to 352. You find three, you, whatever you want to pick out of this and the, the supplemental rich that, the list that Rich has, get it to 352, and all those things you talked about are, are put to bed result, and you're in fine shape. You have plenty of money to trust. Your health insurance line is fine. You'll be good to go. Right, so the goal, obviously, is, like we talked about, the 0% municipal tax Got increase it. without using surplus, Got and this it. allows us to do that. Correct. And, you, and you, you're backed with 4.5 million of current fund surplus, the trust account reserves three million plus another five ninety going into it. So, right. you find three fifty to pick three fifty two of the of this list, and you're in good shape. Oh, Brian's good with the twenty five kit. Yeah, he said we could deduct twenty five on the line item. Of legal. Just go ahead, White. We're dealing with color. <laughs> <laughs> Transfers are always an option. I as, just worried about you taking know. a lot out of the police department. Well, it's not taking. There's no. Well, it's just taking away. No, I can like, tell you, I, I had potential. Less. That's <laughs> we're, we're cutting back where where a buffer has been installed. Oh, okay. The, the, the There's one hundred thirty thousand in Frank budgeted was, was in there. Less than that? Despite that, gotcha. uh, you can come in at fifty. You can say seventy-five. Or something. Gotcha. This okay. is potential. That's these are deductions. Potential we, egg potentials. Yes. We can just we, we don't have to take this whole hundred. No, the donor can take twenty thousand of it. Yeah. Right. So, or we can take said, like fifty off of Brian. I had a, yeah. a few more items yeah. in smaller amounts. I kind of, you know, spread it around a little bit more. Um, yeah. I was just trying to get you to a, get you there a little you quicker. Know, this is a little bit of a. Right. Of a no, this is perfect. Thing. Thank you. Um, so we'll then we'll prepare something that you know follows that direction, uh, and you know get it ready. But again, is there anything else that you want to address via an amendment, or is everybody? Oh, this is now the time, kind of time to do it. No, I think what you're doing is well, and I got to take the time. What what we're doing and what we did and what oh, this whole council was involved in doing in the last several weeks, everyone thinks we're home uh, watching <laughs> television. We're out here trying to understand and work with the budget numbers we have to facilitate a balance to to the, to the uh, residents that is flat. Number one, <clears throat> but to learn how to do it. And I think I got to congratulate all my. Fellow council people, good question. Oh, for very good questions. Very jumping good. in feet first and spending Saturdays trying to figure out how this works. A lot of time, all and, of you. And of we time. did what we had to do, and I think uh, the product that we were getting is a result of our the work that we yeah. put in. We're not finished. We have to have another meeting. I understand, <laughs> but I'm saying up to now. We're close. We We're did close. very well. And I think I just want to say, I mean, look. Looking at all the towns that are out there, how many towns are really coming in with a zero percent? I don't want to increase? jinx anything. That's why I want. <laughs> you're in uh, very good shape, as I said uh, uh, at the last meeting. You're in a uh, very fortunate position where you have options. Um, you know, not many towns can, you know, uh, uh, you know, be on track for a, for no increase without really uh, uh, sacrificing or have some some uh, um, scam to that, that's really uh, delivering it. It's not. You are not uh, artificially suppressing the rate by any means whatsoever with this. The key to that is the surplus that you would be anticipating is would be limited to 500,000. And you have data that supports that you return on a regular basis between four and 500,000. That's what you generate in cash. We were so told we can't use that word anymore. Which one? Surplus. Fund balance. Unbalanced. For, Frank, so for us old timers, it's so. That's our new word, yeah. word unbalanced. Yeah. Frank, can you just kind of just take a snapshot looking back 10 years and kind of explain how we got to this stage because of the financial planning for the well, council? Yeah, you, well, you, you, you've tightened up on the. These, these things come about by, uh, um, you know, reining in the budget process. The, the council has gotten much more involved in the, you know, in the process, much more. Uh, um, uh, deliberate. Uh, um, they, they've been watching, you know, nickels and dimes, and, and I think the uh, I think the approach to the debt service and the, and, and funding deferred charges and jumping on uh, rates when you did you did you know, the last sponsor you did a you had a home run. I mean, you delivered rates, you know, for the next mm -hmm. 15 years that are that are super low. So you you you've done very you know prudent things over the years, and and uh, um, the some of the costs that that got lowered. 
um, leaving some of the money in the lines, you know, is bearing fruit at this point. Say, okay, maybe we have a little bit more room now to take from here, and then we can start to, you know, uh, uh, mitigating some of these larger increases. You're in tremendous shape with your health. With your health, tremendous shape with it. You're, you're covered. You got a ton of cash that you haven't even touched yet. Your line is adequate. Uh, the, and nobody even talks about the, you, I don't know, do you give a report on the, 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 the increases itself? We primarily talk about the effect on the line. Do we ever talk about the actual cost increases? I mean, what kind of oh, increases yeah. do you... Well, you see, you see the budget books that council gets that, you know... Yeah, it's pretty much focus very on, uh, Nine times ten, the focus is on the, yeah. on the, the line, but what's, what's the nothing most? Yeah. From the actual cost last year, the actors and the retirees... From last year, did we get a percent increase to this year? Do we have a uh, oh, the health? You mean? Yeah, overall the health, the premiums. Uh, well, the pre the premiums themselves, uh, for about the first time in my career, were essentially flat amongst all yeah, lines. So we're doing so the costs themselves right. too. What do you uh, have on the, on the, on the but you know there there were extra costs there due to retirements and picking up retiree health care costs and whatnot. Uh, you, you, that we're, you built this process. You know, you've got a, a significant number of retirees that are on there. So you're built in. You're already up and up and running with this. So you're hedged with this, you've got the cash to cover it, your line is working right, you've got a little bit, you know, you've got some room this year if you want to, if you want to take from it, you can, you can certainly take from there, and probably we'll be looking at something catastrophic going into, into next year. So it's, it's really, you're in a good place, thank God, to hope the options can, you know, hope the options can available to you. Just one quick question, because one of the things that was very important to the council was getting our bond rating. Um, and from right. what, what I understand, when they start to look at what we're doing, if it looks like we're unwilling to have a tax increase when needed, that's one of those red tr red flags that hurt our bottom. Right. The way we're doing this, we are. This is this is You're eliminating that. from the from the rating agency standpoint. <coughs> this is a prudent way Correct. to do it. Correct, because they're going to do the same amount, you know, much more in depth than I do quickly. But they're going to see what kind of cash you're generating on a regular basis. We have a list that you saw it the other night, right. listed by year. Um, it it's not going to haunt us for the following year. No, no because we, we're, there's, you can clearly see that between 400 and 5,000 on average, just some years where you deliver even more. So if you limit the amount that you use towards, uh, and they would focus, what are they using for operations? Because they know the, operate, the other stuff is discretionary. You can leave it in one year, take it out the next. The salaries and wages, the OE, you know, the stuff that they have to, you have to pay bills on, your normal operations, what are you taking out of your savings account to put towards that? Are you lowering your savings and not replenishing it? You're in a position where whatever you utilize, you're replenishing that and then some. So you're not dipping that balance down. So it's in a, it's in a, you a basically balance. found the sweet spot at 500, for now, and that could change, but you know, you've basically found the sweet spot for that use of surplus. And that's pretty much what they identified if you look back in their report. That they that they took. Well, they a don't want so much to go in to be under. You're not dipping into balance. You're right. whatever you're using, you're replenishing. So you're never drawing down. Right. That's when you hear that term drawdown. You're just using more than you're putting back. I, I'd you like haven't been in a drawdown in quite some time. Mm -hmm. So that's why this here would be important. It would it would that three fifty two would kind of tip you into a, a drawdown, and you don't have to do it. You don't have to do it. So. I'd just like to echo what Councilman Bialy said. I know uh, several members put in even more time to understand the budget, and I appreciate everything they did. We've had extra meetings. Uh, I'd just like to say um, the council did put a lot of time in on this. We just didn't take it for granted. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we pressured. We pressured Frank and, and, and Rich to, to come up with better numbers, and they did do it. And, and, and I feel you need to do that every once in a while. I just can't keep saying. You do it every year. Yes, 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 yes. You have to say, look, take another look, take another look, take another look. Exactly. You know, we, we had them go back that at least four or five times that I know of, yeah. and, 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 and maybe more. So uh, they, they, they both we're did. We're still going back. They, we were still. Yeah. Well, we have a one more meeting next week. If you wanted to plan a meeting. We're, we're going to, I'd like to have a meeting. Just oh, real quick, just to introduce the amendment. Uh, so we can get that advertised and uh, you know it doesn't have to be a discussion meeting just to take the action of introducing the amendment uh, so we can your get your hearing uh, is done so that's out of the right. way but uh, we'll need it we'll need a hearing on the amendment right and you can't do it the same that. night so it'll be kicked we to can, another night right so we can basically plan on adopting at the next council meeting on May 9th so do you want to look at dates now Oh, uh, no. It may be easier to stop Kathy yeah. follow okay. up with everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hey, Frank, do you think uh, Governor Murphy can learn a thing or two from the borough of Oakland? 
All right, it's my bedtime. <laughs> <laughs> right, I, want to, uh, I just want to thank you, you and Rich, for, You're welcome. you know, I was one of the ones that needed a little extra education on this and spent a lot of Saturdays and, and with some of the guys uh, learning and digging in deeper than, than, uh, than I, I did last you year. Asked, you asked a lot of good questions yes. and everybody else did, and, and we appreciate it because, you know, an involved and, you know, more uh, uh, interactive council helps us. You know, it helps us. Thank you. Frank, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Got it. I Where was calling on weekends and stuff. <laughs> yeah, resolutions. Um, I'll read them with, with the consent. Oh, was there more? I'm no, sorry. that's it. No, that's it. Thank you. You said it was your bedtime. Yes. <laughs> Passed it. Um, with the consent Good agenda, Thank unless you want any uh, taken out. Um, 18-192 is to authorize the hiring of a public works laborer, Matthew Goodridge, effective May, Monday, May, uh, April 30th. 2018 at an annual salary of $35,603. And 18-193 is to authorize the settlement agreement with uh, an employee, uh, Mr. Conway, which um, we discussed in depth. 18-194 is authorized refund of recreation fees to Carolyn Catanacci, 90 Pawnee Avenue, for $20 from a difference between baseball and t-ball. 18195 is hire seasonal laborers for the Department of Public Works, effective April 30th. Cooper Jost, $12 an hour. Tyler Dyes, at $12 an hour. 18196 accept bids for the sale of bicycles. Winning bidder, bicycle one, Joseph Seals, $11. Bicycle two, lot two, Joseph Seals, $11. Bicycle lot number three, Virginia McMahon, $51. And bicycle lot number four, Joseph Seals, for $43. 18197 is to authorize the contract for the Legal Assistance Pilgrim Pipeline. And this is a retainer agreement to extend it to John Scagnelli as legal counsel to the Municipal Pipeline Corporation, extending from March 11, 2016, um, with the same terms and conditions as been previously. Agreed. 198 is cons conservation agreement with Land Conservancy. Execute a conservation agreement in the form of this res resolution. And um, it is uh, based on the acquired properties designated Block 1, 1605, Lot 9, Block 1605, Lot 10, under the flood buyout program. 18199 is the Green Acres Project Agreement. And it is obtaining a grant for 500000 from the state to fund the following project, Borough of Oakland Open Space and Recreation Plan. And 18200 is authorized to return our redemption monies for an outside lien holder, tax sale lien 1722, block 2505, lot 5, <coughs> known as 59 Lakeview Terrace, and in the amount of $1,096.23. Um, is there a motion? So moved. Second. Second. Any pulled out? I just have a question about the um, 197. Just uh, quick. I mean, is this is this just the same agreement? Is it, is it it's exactly the same money? agreement. Uh, there's no monies coming out right now. Uh, there is a balance that we all 15 municipalities are still working on, and until that balance gets down to a, a minimum, we won't have to recharge it. And right now, there's nothing going on. So. Mm -hmm. But this covers right. this year, as opposed to the one we did last year covering mm -hmm. last year. Right. Yeah. Now, now, if for some reason it would become really active and there would be some sort of a cost in, uh, in accruing or that we would have to pay this year, we'll come back, we'll let you know, because um, it's, it's, the retainer is normally 350 per month. But as John indicated, they're just going to work down on their current balance for now. Okay. So there was a motion and a second? Mm -hmm. Any other discussion? Roll call. Councilman Bialik. Yes. Councilman Knapp. Yes. Councilman Kamala. Yes. Councilman Levy. Yes. Councilman Pinguzelli. Yes. Councilman Talamini. Yes. Now we have a final adoption of 18 Code 767 Prohibition of Sale of Marijuana. And just for everybody's information, um, the plan was, you had asked the planning board to review it. The planning board has um, done adjourned it. Let's do a little research. Yeah, they wanted, they tabled yeah. it to do more research on it. So how do we proceed on this? We're going to have the public hearing this evening. And Does anyone wish to speak on this? 
A motion to open to the public. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Does anybody wish Feel to speak so. on this? Motion to close. So yes. moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And yeah. then you could move to table to the next meeting for uh, their well, the, uh, the planning board meeting would be May 10th, so right. we would have to table it to our second meeting. In right, May. okay. Then it would be May 23rd. May 23rd. So somebody should make a motion to table to that specific date. Make a motion to table to May 23rd. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, table. Now, um, excuse me, Mayor. Yeah. I just want to say just one quick follow up thing on the budget, if it's okay. Oh, uh, now marijuana? No, we're all good with marijuana. Oh, got it. Um, you know, I think we, you know, a lot of us spent some, a lot of time with uh, former councilman Frank DePentema also. He helped, he helped us and so did actually, you know, I know we reached out to Steve also. Um, so there were a lot, of, there were some, some, some financial professionals in the, you know, who were residents who also put their time into this and we certainly appreciate it. Yes, Thank and they you. volunteered their time. And they did, they did volunteer their time. But Lou supplied the bagels. I did. I did. And coffee that one time. Okay. Thank you. No, thank them. Okay. Work session items. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Johnny Kemmick's here tonight, uh, so I think we'll probably be handling these together. The first one, uh, and, and all three of these in, involve uh, work to be done, potentially to be done by Boswell to move forward with uh, various tasks that need to be completed and projects that we're initiating. Uh, the first is the road resurfacing program. This would be for uh, design and construction. And uh, the program we've put together this year based on the annual road rating uh, process that we go through between DPW and engineering, uh, along with a grant that we secured that was uh, from NJDOT that was submitted last year, uh, would include the repaving of Ramapo River Trace, Riverdale, Hunter's Run, uh, Chickasaw Drive, and Pima Court. That's funded with the grant. Uh, also the First Aid Squad parking lot. Uh, there would be two alternates in the bid, one for West Shellfield, one for Saratoga. Uh, just if the pricing is very favorable, we may be able to pick up one of those. Uh, so Ramapo River Trace, River Trace is on here? Yes. Mm -hmm. So the resident who wrote to me and I wrote back today, no. this is your road. I'm sorry? Just telling the resident oh. who wrote to us today that Ramapo River Trace. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't, I didn't see the email. Yes. Okay. I'm speaking to the, uh, to the choir. Uh, and then it would also include two drainage areas, one uh, a head wall up on Andrew uh, and a, uh, a drainage problem that affects street icing on Manitou. Uh, funding would be from approved bond ordinances, uh, but again, the, the final cost would be offset by a $200,000 NJDOT grant. Uh, and I want to point out, if you recall last year, uh, late in the year, we did the bond ordinance that is actually going to fund the bulk of this work. I'd indicated at the time that it was, um, the language was structured so that uh, you could also use it for the bridge. Uh, however, we're ready to proceed with the design for this project. It'll probably get out to construction before the bridge. Um, so we're going to need to do a separate bond ordinance, again, to fund the bridge work, which, of course, is backed by a half million dollar uh, DOT grant. We have a second grant in. Hopefully, we'll be able to secure some additional money out of that. Uh, but I've asked Boswell for an updated cost estimate uh, and, you know, either sometime in, in, in May or early June, probably makes most sense to do it when we do the rest of the capital. Uh, we'll need to include the bridge funding uh, as a distinct item in the, uh, the 2018 program this year, okay? Uh, so I just wanted to point that out. Does anybody have any questions? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Mr. Cook, uh, actually, just a just quick question. Could we just get an update on Patriots Way Bridge exactly where we are in the process? Uh, uh, absolutely, uh, Councilman. I uh, checked in with the design engineers today at Boswell. We have set a date of May 31st to be completed with our design. Uh, as you may or may not know, that design then has to be approved by the DOT since we are getting funding for construction. But we've set a deadline of May 31st for us to be ready uh, to submit our documents to the DOT for the design. Okay, and if we had to take a, a look out, uh, how soon do you think you could possibly go for a bid and break ground on it? Uh, DOT uh, typical review could be anywhere from one to two months. Of course, we will work very um, 
very uh, aggressively with uh, getting their review done. They'll go out to bid. That bid process usually takes about 30 to 45 days of advertisement. So now you're talking three and a half months, uh, an award, four months, uh, construction start, um, perhaps most likely in the fall, okay. if the funding is there. Correct? Uh, well, the funding will be there by then. Okay. And, and ass assuming we move right from budget adoption to capital budget discussion and move ahead with those ordinances. But we're still putting in for an additional grant. We right. it's, it, it's already in. We're, it's in. we're waiting to hear from you. Oh, it's yeah. already been submitted. Yes. Very good. Okay. Thank and, you. And then can I just ask, um, on uh, the last council meeting, a, a resident from Andrew uh, came and was asking about the, <coughs> the yes. water behind them. Yes, we're, we're, we're working. Uh, we've been in communication with the resident. Uh, as a matter of fact, we had a conference uh, this morning uh, with the borough attorney. Uh, there are some jurisdiction matters that have to be worked out. Uh, I'm going to be preparing a memo, and uh, the resident should be getting an answer within the next uh, 30 days on how we plan to proceed in the future. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Preparation of the wastewater management plan amendment. Uh, right. So this is for, to authorize continuing services. Uh, as you know, it's... Uh, Boswell has previously prepared the wastewater management plan uh, and has had numerous discussions with uh, the DEP. The comment period is closed. Uh, we're waiting to hear now. We're in that, that period where NJDEP can come back and consider the comments that were made and order revisions. So we're waiting to hear what happens with that. Um, but this would be additional funding uh, to handle all of the work that comes with uh, the, WIMP, the meetings, dealing with any comments, dealing with any revisions, uh, handling the preliminary layout for the interceptor work, uh, and Boswell asked for consideration of additional funding for that uh, of $60,000. Um, that's one of the items that would be funded through uh, this year's sewer utility uh, by using some, some of the fund balance there. Uh, John, I don't know if you have anything else you want to add because I know that there are some other items that come out of this process in terms of coordination on the water use and conservation management plan, septic management ordinance. No, I think uh, like I think at our last meeting we put all our ducks in a row and we have a plan in place uh, and we're moving forward. Okay. 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 Are there any any comments or questions on? Not that one. What is system asset management plan? Okay. Uh, water system asset man management plan. Uh, last year, the state adopted a law called the Water Quality Accountability Act uh, that, as Boswell's proposal sets forth, established new requirements for purveyors of public water to improve the safety, reliability, and administrative oversight of water infrastructure. Uh, so this put on requirements that become effective April of 2019. Uh, and this is a component of that, this uh, water system asset management plan. Uh, and there are several components to it as uh, is set forth in the proposal, including uh, an inventory and a conditions assessment, uh, look, establishing different service level goals, um, prioritizing infrastructure, looking at your life cycle costs, uh, and dealing with capital improvement planning. This is something that all water systems, is, as far as I'm as far as I understand, all water systems need to go through. Um, we asked about grants for this, uh, and essentially we're informed, well, if, you're, if your town's 10000 or less, they'll give you a $100,000 grant. If you're over $10,000, you're not entitled to anything. So, uh, unfortunately, the, you know, this is something we're going to have to pick up through the water uh, utility. The nice thing about it is there, there's things in here. First of all, there's a lot of best practices in here uh, that, you know, that, that water utilities really should be engaged in, uh, that we are to probably just to some extent, but this is going to formalize it a lot more. Uh, and it includes some things that we've been, you know, it's been kind of on our wish list for a while, and especially including the asset mapping itself, getting everything into GIS, um, you know, in, in real time with updated data uh, on the entire water system infrastructure, uh, everything from, you know, valves and pumps and lines and the diameter of the lines and the age of the lines and all of that is going to help us 
down the road, uh, you know, be more effective in maintaining the system. So, um, any questions? Again, this is something that's going to be th th this work is going to be required of us uh, in order to meet the, the legal requirements. But with with that, I don't know if uh, the committee members have anything that they'd like to add. Or well, any we, we we all heard that the GIS system and incorporating the entire water system into the GIS system is going to save a lot of valuable time of pe going through uh, pencil drawings of the old system as we do it now. Everything will be, they'll be able to open up their phone and just create the area they're in on their phone and they, uh, they'll be able to determine which valves to shut down in case there's, a, if there's a break so they and they know whose water is going to be shut off and it's all going to be laid out on this gis system which is we're moving into the 21st century uh which is a time saving and money saving uh addition to uh, the water utility any other questions okay anybody have any new business sorry did, did blue have are you got a question <laughs> no yeah i mean it, it, you didn't raise your hand you didn't press the button? Well, I can't do everything at once. <laughs> um, I mean, I, I just, I'm trying to understand. It looks like, because this is, uh, I guess it, it appears that we're, we're going to be into Boswell here for 60000 for this. And did we, I mean, did we seek any other bids on doing any of this work? Or is this just what this stuff costs? And uh, no, well, on the on which one? On on the water system asset management plan? Yeah. N no, we didn't seek other proposals. Um, you know, we can certainly take. I mean, a it's one hundred and five thousand dollars. Yeah, I mean, there there are water and sewer system engineers, uh, and again, they're they're familiar with the system okay. itself. Um, but you know, that's that's a decision for the governing body in terms of how they want to proceed on that. Okay. You could turn your blue light off now. <laughs> and I raised my hand. <laughs> anybody else? New business. Anybody have any new business? Uh, I actually have. Put your blue light on. Okay. Two things. <laughs> um, we had gotten reports of some people cutting trees that had fallen down on their property and throwing them into the river. This is actually, number one, it's a violation of local ordinance and it may be also be, we think, violation of some state laws. Um, several years ago, uh, one of the, we think one of the trees that came off of Roosevelt Boulevard, that embankment that we repaired, got down in the river, made it all the way down to the floodgates, and North, District, North Jersey District Water Supply Commission wound up billing the state of New Jersey, I believe it was fifty or sixty thousand dollars to get that tree out of those gates. Um, if you put law, you know, you put anything into the waterway, number one, you are degrading the waterway. You, it's against the law. You could cause serious damage. You could cause those gates to not function properly, which could do irreparable harm either to people downstream or upstream. So we, we you know, once again, we've asked before that residents please do not use the river as you know as a dumping ground for garbage and for for yeah. and organic matter counts even big grass time. clippings grass clipping actually and you're right Bob that grass clippings uh, were the cause of the Sar the embankment on Saratoga uh, becoming degraded to the point where there's now shoaling in there so these are all things that we have to watch and I, and I also did hear from uh, Roy Balberger who is our riverkeeper and OEM director. He will be working with some volunteers and Tom Potash and some, and some of Potash's equipment and our DPW uh, in some of the evenings coming up to remove a lot of the trees and, de and debris that are in the river now. So, you know, as always, thank you to them for that. Yeah. As we get another item. No, it's just it. the one? Well, that was two things. It was don't throw stuff in the water and Roy's fixing the tree oh, okay. in the river. Okay. Mayor. Yeah, so anybody else other new business? Yes, uh, thank you, Mayor. Just one thing, I, I brought up the uh, recycling last uh, meeting. And yes. Mr. Coons, you were going to look into and yes, I had asked the superintendent you about, about uh, what we can do for cardboard and some kind of recycling. <coughs> through the recycling center? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I had uh, reached out to Franklin Lakes. I've gotten some data on how they operate their, their center. 
uh, and I'm scheduling a meeting with Eugene and Anthony. I uh, also spoke to them a little bit about the Council's desire uh, to investigate this uh, and to look at an appropriate area and you know, see how we may be able to do that. Uh, and so I have a meeting uh, being scheduled for the next week or two. I, I actually you. did speak to Anthony about it the other day. And um, there's an, the area in the back where we built the bins for the material. Mm -hmm. There's a fence there. Mm -hmm. Um, that may be an area. Anthony's concern at the time was that Rec may have wanted or needed that for parking, but I talked to Mike Guardino, uh, and he wouldn't have a problem if we used that area there, provided, you know, it would have to be cameraed, uh, and it would have to be, you know, lit at night and whatnot. But, but it's, it appears to be a suitable area, and I guess with the advent of our buying some, some roll-off trucks that apparently can handle 30-yard dumpsters, um, we're actually in a, in a pretty good position to do this without having to bring in an outside vendor. Uh, the, I know Anthony was going to look into where we would be able to get rid of the recyclables. Um, I think Patterson was, was certainly the preferred area. Mm -hmm. The alternative being Newark, and that, that becomes a little bit of a, of a mm -hmm. problem for us in terms of you know, the, what's called stem time yeah. down and back. So it will not affect where the children are? No. No. Okay. No, there's a fence that you could back the dumpsters right up to the fence. Oh. So we'll, we'll have the meeting uh, and we'll, we'll report back. Good, thank you. Any other new business? If not, council committee, who wants to start, which ends? I'll start. Okay. Um, public safety uh, stats. Remember I said the second meeting of each month, I'm gonna read stats from the previous month. So I'll start with police. March of 2018, they responded to 1,915 total calls for service. Some of those were, um, and I'm just giving you some highlights, uh, 395 motor vehicle stops, 58 school checks, 67 fire calls, 91 ambulance calls, eight um, stationary traffic detail, enforcement details, 50 burglar alarms, 33 motor vehicle crashes, and 28 radar details just for the month of, uh, of March. I was kind of shocked to see 33 motor vehicle crashes in one month, but I... Well, it could also I be on the highway. Weather and, uh, yeah. And the highway. There were a lot of Better accidents on the highway. So much. All right, fire department. Um, March, 2,435 total man hours spent by the volunteers. That included 67 calls, which equated to 1,659 uh, man hours and three drills, which equaled 353 total training hours. Year to date for the fire department, 6,541 total man hours uh, volunteered, 137 calls year to date, equating to 3,718 man hours, nine drills, equaling 1,064 training hours. They responded to three mutual aid calls, three structure fires in Wyckoff. Uh, during the month, we set up two helicopter landing zones during the month. We uh, extricated one person out of a motor vehicle crash with an entrapment. Mm -hmm. And yes, they got one cat out of a tree in the month of March. <laughs> um, Get the ladder truck now. Yeah, so if anybody's ever seen a scat, a cat skeleton in a tree, oh. let us know, because they all come down, so <laughs> we don't need to pass. Um, just put a can of it's tuna fish at the bottom of the tree. Ambulance squad, 91 calls for service for the month. Again, they're in transition with software, so I have minimal details. 200 hours spent physically on calls, 1,600 hours on what they call on duty, which is standing by for calls. 175 hours of CPR training and one CPR save, which is what the police were recognized for tonight. And, and I want everybody to know that the um, first aid squad is, is not slighted on these awards by any means. They, they present their awards to themselves at their annual dinner. Um, and we've all been to their dinners and see everybody recognized there. Um, we, we are discussing, possibly talking to them, Pat and I have talked about having them come here and get recognized the same, same way we did the police. Something to discuss, it's up to them if they want to do it, but 
Uh, I just want the public to know that they are not neglected by any means. Um, they were part of that CPR save, and they do recognize themselves at, at their, their annual dinner. So. And that's all I have. Um, You're on. <laughs> the Flood Commission, the next meeting of the Flood Commission will be on May 7th at 7.30 at the Senior Center. Uh, I'd like to remind everybody the Flood Commission is still looking for new members. There will be uh, a couple of members retiring uh, certainly by the end of this year. Uh, so if you have any interest in participating, it's a very worthwhile organization that, that has helped get us um, a lot of flood prevention in the borough, helped us get the uh, community rating system in place, which has helped residents who pay for flood insurance pay somewhat lower rates. Um, the Shade Tree Commission will be meeting on the, I'm sorry, the Shade Tree Commission is the 7th. The Flood Commission is the 14th. Um, Ed Clark from the Shade Tree did go out. I know he was looking at some of the trees that came down in the storm that we got reports about. Yes. So he's always on top of that. And uh, Station Park, we met with a somewhat shortened group uh, last week. Uh, we are getting to the point where we will be the committee will be making a presentation before the council okay. to show you the plans that have been, that have been drawn up uh, we have a very realistic workable um, budget and we've been in touch I've been in touch with Marlene Casey our grant writer regarding the streetscape grant and some of the things that we need I will like to ask any residents uh, who like the idea of having a park like this in town be great if you could um, drop a line to I guess the station park committee we're gonna actually I think the, to you. They, could go directly. Or they can send it to my email um, and the station park committee is going to be setting up a Facebook page uh, one of the things that we need in order to help get the grant is public support so uh, we would certainly appreciate anyone from the public who has an interest in it who thinks that it would be a great idea to have a park that would help, you know, bring people into the into the borough, represent the borough a little bit, uh, and be sort of the, the beginning of our downtown renovation. Um, it would be greatly appreciated. And Pat, yes. you're on. Well, I have a question, uh, not a question, but um, yeah, as far as shade tree. Do I need to have the light on? Yes. yes. Okay. Um, go ahead. When I was coming off, I'm, they're probably aware of this, but I saw when I was coming off 287, exiting onto 202. Uh, behind Faber Brothers, there's a tree down in the in the in Allerman Brook. If you if you if you go to the um, bridge on Rampo Valley Road in Franklin right. and look down Allerman Brook, there's another there's another tree in in Allerman Brook, and 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 on the Rampo River by the trestle, there's another huge tree in the in the river. I don't know if they knew, know about those. Two. I don't know if they know about them, but if you send those to me in an email, okay. I will make it a point to advise them. Because, like you said, if these get washed down and they hit the, hit the gates, well, the Alamon Brook, the tr the, anything that falls in the Alamon Brook, it's going to go into Crystal Lake. Lake. Yeah. Not that that's a good thing. No. Just saying that that's where it's going to go. Right. Right. I have a question about the CRS program. Yes, ma'am. Um, how often do we have to submit paperwork to try and improve our rating? Once a year. And how are we doing? I think we just did. Didn't we just uh, have Mr. Agnoli here? Not. No. I think I. I don't think I was on the flood. I wasn't the liaison on the flood commission. Uh, the update is due later this year. I forget the I exact. I think timing. it's May, isn't it? Because we didn't we get that's in in May. Well, that's next week. Yeah. Uh, you know what, Nick hasn't been in touch regarding a deadline. No, I thought he, it was. He was. I, I thought he was, but again, I, you know, I can, I well, can certainly find out. We had a couple meetings last year, uh, and at the end of that, he thought that we would be in a good position to go to a six. Uh, right. That we didn't need to recertify last fall, um, and then I haven't heard anything since. Um, is it May or I, I got the impression that it was going to be later in the year. When did we, I don't, and I just don't remember, when did we get in? Because it's, it's, it's the anniversary of when you were accepted yeah. the CRS. It was around this time, wasn't it? I, 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 I don't think remember. that we got the announcement, but I'm not sure that that was when it actually yeah, no, it started. Took, from when we got the announcement, it, it, it's not when they announced it, it's when you're actually, okay. actually, and for some reason I kind of think June, maybe. 
I'm thinking about it now. For some reason, I think June. Could be. Uh, would you like me to just shoot Nick an email? And I can. I can. I, I talk to Nick a couple times a week now, so I'll give him okay. a call and find out. Okay. This is a great reason why we have to extend the table out. Because <laughs> I can't see. I well, moved. Who's speaking? I moved. Right. <laughs> no, but Brian's in the way. I'm in the way. I'm emailing our administrator. Okay. As far as uh, my liaisons, um, unfortunately, I had to attend a, uh, uh, a wake uh, the night the Board of Health uh, met. Um, so I cannot report on the Board of Health uh, meeting uh, uh, this month. Um, as far as finance, again, I, I want to thank the, the rest of the committee, Rich and, and Frank Di Maria, uh, really, really um, paying a lot of attention to the budget. And uh, my hat's off to everyone who put in extra time above and beyond. As John said, you know, we're not home watching TV all the time. Uh, we do meet other than what we, you know, come here to the Borough Council. Uh, so uh, it was really uh, very educational, very enlightening, and, uh, uh, very hard, and a lot of hard work by the Council. And that's it, Mayor. Thank you. Council Bialik. Yes, thank you, Mayor. Uh, I have one note. I have uh, <laughs> my seniors always start on first, and I want to report that uh, uh, the Mayor, myself, and, and Pat was also at uh, Josephine Berkowitz's 103rd birthday yes. yesterday. Uh, it was a great event. A lot of seniors showed up. Mm -hmm. All the tables were filled. And Angelo Trezano, he was all, also given his uh, Goodwill Ambassador and mascot of the Senior Center Award. Uh, and we all had uh, some good cake and roses, great coffee. Yes. So thank you very much to them. And happy birthday once again, Josephine. Um, and tomorrow's Senior Center uh, at 12 noon, there's going to be a History of Oakland given by uh, Kevin Hefferman. So if uh, you're, you belong to the Oakland Senior Club, uh, that's going to be on top for tomorrow. Doors open at 11 a.m. I have to say, I went to the last one. It is unbelievably enlightening about the history, history of Oakland. Yeah. yeah. It's excellent. Uh, DPW. I just want to bring up a, 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 there was some conversation earlier about uh, our recycling possibly having a dip in it because of the change in the process and the procedure of uh, doing uh, the stream on Wednesday, on one Monday for, on one Wednesday for paper and the other for co-mangled. I, I, I want everyone to understand, <clears throat> the more you throw in the garbage, the more we pay. Uh, the more you recycle the more money we get back sure. so if you want to look at it as a bank account the better off you do each and every one of us in recycling and separating and not take be, taking the lazy way out and just throwing it into the garbage uh, we pay for the garbage and we get money back on recycling so if we can uh, start just paying attention to what we're doing every day and I think our children will probably a good be a good uh, forcer enforcer on making sure that we all uh, recycle as much as we can. It it's, can only be good for the borough. Um, historical, I was so happy, I'm still happy to hear that we finally broke ground with the uh, SHPO and have the opportunity to make changes at the stream house. Uh, Eagle Scouts, I had the uh, great opportunity after, after the uh, the temple uh, uh, opening on Sunday, uh, I, I went off to the Messiah Lutheran Church and Eric joined me and I was uh, very proud of the three new Eagle Scouts in town, uh, Robert Pringle, Edward Wegman and Nick Henson, all with extremely incredible projects that brought them to the, uh, to the extremely uh, uh, really small club. I think it's 3%, 4% of all Scouts become Eagle Scouts. And they entered a very finite group of people, uh, some of who, if you look back, astronauts and senators and you know, people of distinction who have made that Eagle Scout uh, Academy, uh, reach. Tomorrow morning I'll be at the Reed Academy uh, at breakfast. Uh, Reed Academy is our uh, school for Autism in Oakland, and they'll be honoring the president of Rampo College at 8.30 in the morning. Thank you for covering. Thank you so much for offering that to me. I'm also bringing them a little, um, little gift. I spoke to Jill today, 
Uh, I'm letting them know about our new special uh, needs project in Franklin Lakes, which she oh. just about heard about, so I'm bringing some pictures and some flyers with me. Um, and on Thursday, May 3rd, at the Yapo Firehouse at noontime, I'll be joining the mayor, hopefully, uh, for the National Day of Prayer. And we'll get a proclamation we for that. It's already okay. done. And um, last week, Rich and I attended the Northwest Community Development Meeting in Wyckoff at Power Hall on the 18th. And uh, that's my report. And sampling of what we do here, we're always, we're not home a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I can guarantee you, we're not home a lot. We're out doing things for the good of the borough, and uh, we're all very proud to have the opportunity to, to do that. Thank, thank you. you. Councilman? Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Uh, last Friday, Councilman Bialy, myself, uh, Garo Administrator, uh, members of Boswell, we had a very productive uh, water sewer meeting. Good news is the wastewater management plan window is closed, so we're continuing, continuing to push forward uh, and getting the sewers for the downtown area. Obviously, this is getting more and more uh, uh, complex as we get through the system, and we are starting to meet more and more often. Um, as far as the library goes, uh, we had a library meeting uh, this, uh, this afternoon. I'm happy to report that in the last couple of weeks, they have uh, completed most of the lighting. The flooring is in. Front doors have been replaced. Uh, the painting is completed. Storefronts have been finished. And they're starting to uh, the test the sprinkler system. Also looking forward for the next two weeks, they're going to be putting the ceiling tiles in downstairs. The HVAC in the basement will be completed. Uh, basement lighting will be completed along with the flooring and we're getting very close to completion so we're probably looking at sometime uh, late uh, late spring early summer uh, as we're getting close as this wow. is coming to a close uh, also they had a wonderful program last friday it was called the biography of teddy roosevelt there were 68 people from town that attended uh, it was a one-man show uh, just like the other two were um, Let's see, what else did I have here? Oh, last Saturday also they had the Earth Day uh, uh, cleanup that I attended uh, with the Environmental Commission, and we had gone to Potash Lake, Great Oak Park, and parts of the Ramapo River, including Stewart Woods were cleaned. Also, there was a tree ceremony for Mr. Wilson, who was uh, part of the Shade Tree Commission. Uh, there's a tree now dedicated in Stewart Woods, right in front of the First Day Squad. You will see it. So this tree will re be a reminder of uh, all the hard work that Mr. Wilson did for the Borough of Oakland. Uh, there's also a Communications Commission meeting next Wednesday that uh, uh, Brian had talked about. That'll be at 7.30 right here at Borough Hall. And also, once again, I just want to recognize what John said about the 369 Eagle Scouts. Uh, it truly is a uh, elite group of individuals that really rise to that le level. Uh, and I was uh, particularly interesting to me because I was a former member of Troop 369 at the day, but I never made it to Eagle, so that's really how tough it is. Um, also, I just want to, uh, the Borough of Oakland actually uh, last week lost a, uh, a centenarian. Uh, his name was Charles Verdame. He was from Oakland. He, from, he was, lived from 1917 to 2018. He was 101 years old, and we lost him last week. Oh. And he was a resident of Oakland. So, okay. God rest in peace. Thank you. Council. Uh, yes, just um, public events. Uh, just, we always need some members. It's a great group of people. They do great events. Uh, we're looking forward to the Memorial Day Parade and the Carnival and the Baseball uh, Parade. What is that? Uh, baseball, if, um, I don't have the date in front of me, but... Um, Got to be in the next it's, couple of it's, it's not, it's, it's in, it's, 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 it's in the, it's at towards the end of the season. Okay. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, it's towards the end of the season. Um, and then, uh, but, but again, uh, please, if you have the time, join the public events committee. It's a, it's a great, great, great group. Uh, and then the schools, the budget passed, uh, uh, Lisa Cooper was reelected and Pete Mazzilli was reelected. And thank you to everyone that voted. Thank you. We're still trying to get a meeting with the school board to talk about elections. I just have to throw that in. Um, with that, I'll entertain a motion to open the public. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Since there's no one here, motion to close. So moved. So moved. All, all in favor? Aye. All right, Councilman Pickens-Telly, bills to be paid. Yes, thank you, Mayor. $226,797.56, so moved. 
Second. Any discussion? Roll call. Councilman Bialik. Yes. Councilman Knapp. Yes. Councilman Kamal. Yes. Councilman Needy. Yes. Councilman Pignatelli. Yes. Councilman Tony. Yes. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Next meeting will be here at <coughs> Council Chambers on May 9th. Have a good evening.